It's your boy N O R E. What up, it's DJ E F N. And this is Military Crazy Raw Drink Champs Yappy right. Hour. Make some noise! Uh, and today, I'm excited to introduce a hip hop king when it comes to all of this. The man started out as a DJ. A lot of people don't understand that he was DJ Vlad the Butcher at one point. He was. Uh, 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 heavy on the mixtapes He's a media mogul He has changed the way hip hop Has been looked at He single handedly Solved Tupac's murder <laughs> <laughs> He did what the Las Vegas PD couldn't do And the LA PD couldn't do He brought it to the forefront He made hip hop Interviews change to this day, there's people who still ask me, did you go through the door? <laughs> because I did it on his interview. <laughs> you went through the door on his interview? No, I talked about it. <laughs> talked about it. Talked about He's, he, listen to me. I when know. I tell you, if you need to get hot, you need to be on the streets, you stand in front of his cameras, he's going to ask you the questions that you need to be uh, asked, and he's going to get you to the forefront of where you need to be. In case you don't know who the fuck we talking about, hip-hop mogul. One, only, Vlad TV, motherfucking TV! Now, now, for people who's just tuning in, DJ Vlad is one thing, but then Vlad TV is a separate entity, correct? Right. Uh, would you describe it like that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So, so tell us. I mean, Vlad TV is something that started in 2008. Uh-huh. Uh, I couldn't think of a better name. Right. So. <laughs> I just went with my name and put a TV on the end of it. Right. And uh, yeah, man, 16 years later, uh, still doing it daily. Now, when you say we started Vlad TV at that point, yeah. was that where the blogs kind of like... Yeah, the uh, blogging okay. era. Yes, yeah, so early blog era, like the Now Right era. Now Right, yeah. That kind of like replaced the mixtape culture. On Smash? In my yeah, On Smash yeah. was okay. around. Worldstar was definitely around. Okay. We modeled the news site kind of after Worldstar. Okay. You know okay. Was there ever any problem with Worldstar? Nah, I mean, me and Q kind of have... Had a weird relationship, I guess. Okay. You know, before before Vlad TV, when I was a DJ, he actually booked me for shows. He even went with me to, um, I think Bahrain. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So we, we were real cool. But then when I started Vlad TV, the website, right. I think he saw it as a little bit of competition. So things were a little tense between us. But then you know, I went out to Arizona, spent right. the night at his house. You know, wow. his guest room. Oh wow! You know what I'm saying? Oh wow! Uh, you know, met his family, everything huh. else like that. And then you know, we became kind of cool afterwards. And you know, he he passed away, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. rest you in peace. You. Yeah. yeah. Um, very very humble guy. Very humble guy. Or, or, or did you not see that side of him? Q. Um, yeah. I saw both sides. Okay. You know, we were rolling around in the Aston Martin. Okay, okay, okay. He okay. always had his sunglasses on, his okay. big chain on, mm -hmm. even at a restaurant at night. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I mean, he had his humble, but he also had his braggadocious right, side. You right. know, a little of both. Okay, so let's, 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 let's take it back from the beginning. Yeah. Bay Area? Yeah, I grew up in the Bay Area. I was born in the Ukraine. What used to be the USSR right. at the time. So wow. the Soviet lot, Union. Yeah, the Soviet right. Union. So a lot of times I'll say I'm Russian because at the time it was Russia. Right. Now right. it's Well, Ukraine. that's why the war's happening now because they feel the war, it's still they, Russia. Russia wants it back. Right, right, right exactly. Right. But yeah, I was about four years old when I moved. Uh, originally moved to Massachusetts, Springfield, Massachusetts. Oh, wow. You know, we lived in the projects, you know, oh, okay. poor immigrant Did family. Did you know Benzino? No, I was just playing. Yeah. <laughs> 
I just plan. Just plan I know plan. enough. Yeah, no, 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 no. Um, and then, you know, by around third grade, my family moved to the Bay Area, wow. uh, and that's where I grew from up. From Boston. That's crazy. Well, Springfield. Oh, okay, okay. Springfield. But from Springfield, from uh, one Max. side all the way to the other yeah. side. Ooh, that's, that's extreme to extreme. Yeah, but I was a little kid. Oh, so you didn't, you didn't get to, to, yeah, to, to... third grade is when I got to the Bay Area. Okay. So what, what was I, nine years old, something like that? And what artist is out from, and, and from the, on Bay Area at this time? What, what, what? What artist, artist. is out? It's too well, short out. into hip hop yet. Uh, well, I mean, at the time, yeah, but there was no Bay Area hip hop at that time that I knew about. It was New York hip hop. It was I was buying Grandmaster Flash and the okay. Furious Five. I was buying Run DMC's first album. Wow. Uh, you know, Too Short probably was around, but that was Oakland. I was living in, in San Mateo, which is kind okay. of the other side of the Bay. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, so hip hop. There really were no hip hop artists. I mean, in LA, there were some. Like I was buying Egyptian Lover oh, records wow, and Uncle wow. Jam's Army. Wow. You know what I mean? Back then. <clears throat> Hip hop wasn't on the radio, so you would just go to Warehouse Records and you'd go to the little hip hop section. You just right. buy whatever's available. You right. couldn't listen to it. You'd come home and, and hope it was cool. Right, right, right. That was the hero for sure. Yeah. God damn it. So, when did you fall in love with hip hop? I mean, at that point, um, when breakdancing okay. became a national okay, phenomenon. Was, hold on, was Vlad TV a breakdancer? Vlad was a breakdancer. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can't I, see it. I can't yeah, see yeah, it. Yeah, I was definitely, I was definitely <laughs> a breakdancer. Yeah, that's how I. That's how I got into mm -hmm. hip hop culture. I, mm -hmm. I was. I was a breaker. Mm -hmm. You know, but but the thing is, though, you got to understand. Like, thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, you got to understand the time frame. Mm -hmm. This was the mid '80s, and the U.S. and Russia had a Cold War going on. Right. A lot worse than now because it was potentially a nuclear. Yeah, war. you felt like right. it was going to. You know what I mean? Imminent. Like, yeah. there were shows like the day after that yeah. people thought that there might be a nuclear war. But you don't think that they're thinking that now Putin's a little not, not like it was nah, back that, then. That Cold War was heavy. Yeah, yeah. ever since Putin, yeah, the whole the Bay 80s, of Pigs, they were moving yeah. nuclear yeah. nuclear I, missiles I, to uh, to uh, Cuba, and people thought that. You know, nuclear weapons I'm might gonna, start flying. I'm going to tell you when I got unscared of Putin, when I seen him on the, the horse with the shirt the off, the shirt I was off. like, all right, yeah. he ain't that scary no you more. Think, you <laughs> think <laughs> that's what made you not be scared? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, don't know, yeah. it seemed like you should be even more scared of him. Nah, 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 nah. He, but, he, he was shaving his chest he was, hairs. He was out in the winter he, like he that. He shaves his chest hairs. Right. Just, he can't be that tough. But, but you got to understand, like, you just, I'm kind of trying to set the, the stage for you. At the time, I'm a Russian kid named Vlad. Wow. With an accent? Did you have an accent? Didn't have an accent. Because oh, okay. I was so young when I came out. I was four. My mm -hmm. parents did, but I didn't. I'm Vlad in San Mateo, the only Russian kid in the school. Wow. While, with no other Russian community at the time. San Francisco mm -hmm. had one, but where, where my parents settled down, we didn't. And there was just a lot of hatred towards me. Oh, yeah, because of the Cold War going because on. Because of the Cold right. War. Like, right. the U.S., like, Americans hated Russia, wow. and I was the only outlet, the only person from Russia that people knew. So it was just, like, a lot of, like, people, you know, the kids just, a lot of fights, a lot of, you know, you know, if something would happen, like, if, if the teacher would say something about Russia, the whole class would turn around and stare at me. <laughs> oh, God wow. damn it. You know what I mean? God Which, damn. as a third grader, right. you know, you don't really know how to deal with that. So, right. The only other kids I could really relate to were the, the black kids, right. the Spanish kids, the Filipino right. kids. Thank you. Right. Um, and so I'm not a minority, right. right? But at the time, I was one of the, the people that would kind of, you know, we all related to each other to a certain mm -hmm. thing. And I was drawn to hip hop along with the other black kids and the Spanish kids in my school. And I, I fell in love. You know, the New York City breakers mm -hmm. were starting to be shown on TV. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and I just started falling in love with breakdancing and hip hop and, and graffiti and, you know, mm -hmm. everything else like that. And I just would go home, watch your own TV raps and, mm -hmm. and, and practice breakdance moves in my mm -hmm. living room. And mm -hmm. that's kind of the start of, of my hip hop career. I didn't thought I didn't think that it would get me here at one point. I just thought mm -hmm. it was just a hobby and something I loved. Mm -hmm. Because at that time, hip hop was a fad. You didn't know. They thought you it was going to be. Right, just you, true. Didn't, you didn't know. Right. You didn't know. And right. people were saying like, oh, it won't be around in three years. Right. But as a kid, you don't care about that. You don't care. You're just doing. That's what was every kid was doing. Yeah. Yeah. I truly believe. I truly believe that. Yeah. I, I agree yeah. with you, um, Jamie. I'll, I'll take a drink when you get a chance. Um, yeah. I truly believe that. Um, I truly believe. Listen, all of us, if we didn't get money doing what we love doing right now, we'll be doing a version of it. I don't think it'll be our main job. Right. But we'll be doing a version of it because, yeah. like, I, I I can't see life without you going without being a DJ. Right. Like I I see how much you and and so how did you get into mixtapes? All right, so so the mixtapes. It was um, let me think. So, 
I went to school at UC Berkeley, mm -hmm. right? Which is, you know, right next to Oakland. And for the first time, I was seeing actual real rappers mm. walking around the street, mm. like the hieroglyphics. Oh, wow. A plus and mm. OPO would just be on Telegraph Ave. And other underground rappers were sitting there having ciphers on the corner, like freestyling and, and beatboxing. And I'm like, oh, shit, like here's real hip hop. Mm -hmm. In front of me, because where I was growing up, you know, in, in high school, yeah, a couple of kids tried to rap, but no one was really taking it seriously. But mm -hmm. here I am, and, yo, know, these, these kids are signed to major labels, and mm -hmm. we're listening to their CDs. So I started uh, producing. You know, I played a little bit of band in high school. Mm -hmm. I played saxophone and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had a little bit of musical kind of training, so I started making beats. Mm -hmm. I started producing. I had like um, MPC 60. Mm. I was making beats, making little local demos. Mm. You know, my man Jimmy XL, who I just connected with recently, me and him put a demo together. And I kept making beats. I kept making beats. And um, one day I had a house party and the DJ who, who DJed there ended up leaving his equipment overnight. He's going to pick it up the next morning. Mm -hmm. So I jumped on the turntables and I just like made a mixtape that first night. It just naturally came. Wow. It was just, you know, because I had been practicing, mm -hmm. you know, structuring beats. So it, 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 it kind of came natural. And I just recorded mm -hmm. it live. And I'm like, wow, I just made a mixtape. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. And so I started DJing and kind of, you know, I started doing house parties right. and everything else like that. And I was like, yo, like, I, I love this feeling. Right. Like, I, I love it. And, and I realized that if I really wanted to take it seriously... I'd have to move to New York, right. where, where the mixtape epicenter was. Okay, going too fast. Hold on, let's calm you down. Sorry. Uh, that was my next question. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I, I, so look, because this is what me and you always debate about. At this time, New York was the epicenter, yes. right? For the longest, of course. But you being close to the Bay, did you not think, let me try L.A. first? Cause LA, LA, the LA didn't have the mixtape scene. Okay, they had dope DJs. Like, yeah, yeah. Now who's ruling scene. the mixtape scene? DJ Clue. It's probably before uh, Clue. Clue, no? K. Slade. Okay. Oh, those were Tony like Touch, the, SNS, Tony Touch. Yeah, you know um, mm -hmm. those type of dudes were, were mm -hmm. like the known Green Lantern. Okay, yeah. these were like the known, you know, Dirty Harry, mm -hmm. the Dirty known Harry was, guys. Yeah, you know, because yeah. I was doing blends. Because I was like, I started, because because honestly... Yeah, your style was more leaning towards Dirty right. Harry style. Because yeah, I, I was, I started putting together, I started, you know, using the production shit. I was, you know what I mean? Like, the production shit, I was combining with the mixtape shit. And I was actually the first DJ to re release a mixtape on the internet. What? Yeah. The Refinone on series? <laughs> Way before, before that. that. It was actually a Cypress Hill mixtape. Called Soul Assassination. Wait, wait, up, wait. Up. <clears throat> I ask, be real about this. He knows about. You're this. knocking two birds out with one stone. Yeah. You're saying you're the first DJ to put a mixtape online. Yeah. And then you're also saying it was for Be Real and Cypress Hill. So you're also now, saying I, I was a big Cypress Hill fan, a big Soul Assassin. <laughs> oh, fan. so you wasn't down with them. You just not at all. Dedicated never, it to them. Never. Oh, oh okay, okay, yeah, okay. No, no, no. I, I, didn't, uh, I didn't meet them until way later. Okay. But no, I, I was such a fan of Cypress Hill. Right. And you know, Funk Dubious, House of Pain. Yeah. You right. know. That whole that Extended whole family, movement, yeah, 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 the whole movement, mm. and I put together a mix of just my favorite Cypress Hill songs and blended one into the other, just right. blends everything else like that. And since I didn't have an outlet to put out mixtapes, I uploaded the whole thing as MP3 files. Mm. And then before I what, knew what it, what platform did you upload? Do you remember Napster? Okay, Damn. and and my own website, DJ Vlad. I made my own, my own you know website, DJ and like yo, download my mixtape. Right. You know, one long sixty minute file. file. You know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. And before I knew it. People in like Sweden and Czech Republic and Australia were hitting me. I'm like, yo, we bump this thing in our youth center all the time. Right. And I'm like, I think I'm, I'm on to something here. Like, you know, for the first time, I'm like, yo, my shit's actually kind of being recognized right. outside of my bedroom. Right. And what, what year is that? Like early 2000? 2001. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean you can look. But I mean, let, me, let me ask you, so how hard was it? You said you didn't think of Los Angeles. Yeah. But how hard was it? to transition from that West Coast to New York and then to get your, your music into New York stores. Shout out to Justin. Because, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pardon me because, you're, because these kids nowadays, they press one button mm -hmm. and that shit is everywhere. They don't right. know that you yeah, have to yeah. physically bring it. So I would like you to explain that. I mean, shout out to my man, Justo. Yeah, oh, yeah, Justo. Rest in peace, Justo. Justo helped out the whole mixtape DJ awards, community. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, I got the award. I'm sure you probably got one. I got a couple of awards. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so Justo of Justo's Mixtape Awards. Uh-huh. 
I reached out to him uh-huh. and I'm like, yo, I do mixtapes. He was like, okay, let me check it out. Oh, okay, you know, I like your stuff, whatever, whatever. And I'm like, I- I'm thinking about moving out to New York. He's like, okay, when you come out, hit me up. Right. So when I got out there, I hit him up and he took me Canal Street, wow. Jamaica, Queens, wow. Brooklyn. Wow. That's, that's big of him store, to do that. I can, that smell, store, I can smell everywhere he's talking you know, about. Yeah. I can smell these, it. You know, meet up with these Africans, <laughs> right, eat exactly. the shit on consignment, mm, mm, go mm. to Canal Street. That's, that's and, ill. Because I did that cold call. I did it on my own, not yeah. knowing oh, anybody. Wow. And, not having any guidance? No, nah, okay. me and my crew, we just went oh, out there and nobody oh. barely wanted to talk to us. <laughs> so <laughs> to have right. someone like that take yeah, you around yeah. is Yeah, I was lucky, man. He was a good dude. He He was a good dude, man. And from there, it was like, I like, I got to start from the very bottom. I'm essentially homeless at this point. Because I was broke, right. sleeping on my man's couch, DJing at the China Club, and then that China Club, yeah, and then that ended, and then you know I'm, I'm having to DJ strip clubs, and then at the strip club scores. No, I okay. wish. <laughs> I wish it was just a dead ass strip club that was dying oh, wow. uh, on Coney Island Boulevard. Oh, okay. And um, Dirty Harry came in. Wow. And uh, me and him chopped it up, and that's when we formulated the idea of doing the first Biggie rap phenomenon mixtape. Yeah. Wow. From, the, from that strip club, yeah, from, you know. And then that mixtape got on MTV right. and was no, getting that bumped. That mixtape was crazy. Right. And it was like, oh, okay, now I'm actually doing something that hip-hop is reacting to for the first time ever. Because I had a right. few blend tapes, and yeah, I mean, right. people bought them and liked them, whatever, but that was the first one that actually people paid attention to. And right. then that was so successful, me and Harry were like, yo, we should do a part two, but do a Tupac one. Mm. You know, we should do it with... Well, who's another huge DJ? Oh, Eminem's DJ, mm. Green Lantern. Mm. So at a, I think at a Dipset listening event, we just kind of cornered him. We were like, yo, like, mm. why don't you work on this? You know, because he was the blend, you know, mm. one of the blend kings of that era. And I'm like, yo, why don't you work on it with us and we'll do a Tupac mixtape, but instead of just doing blends, we'll get features mm-hmm. from other artists, mm. like Busta Rhymes, Bounty Killer, mm. Wyclef, Alicia mm. Keys. Mm. Yeah, that was a uh, game changer. Exhibit. Um, on and on and on. We just had these acapellas with beats and guest features and, and yeah, that and that project won mixtape of the year. Wow. Adjust those mixtapes. Adjust those, okay. Yeah. Yeah. And that wow. was like, wow, like out of all these guys that are super, super talented, they they picked this tape. As, right. as the mixtape of the year. So it was just, for me, it was it was a highlight. How, how did you approach artists to do the features for that? We all had our relationships, man. I mean, because cause, uh, Green Lantern was Eminem's DJ and he was working on his album mm-hmm. at the time. Damn. This was before, you know, he called Jada Kiss and yeah. Jada put him on speakerphone. Oh, yeah. And he oh, lost yeah. his yeah, 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 shady yeah, yeah. records. Obviously, obviously. So at that time, everyone wanted to work with him because he had a shady records I don't project. think Green Lantern gets on the phone since. Yeah, right. Yeah. You can't you can't get green on the phone. Green You're like, I'll on the phone. <laughs> yeah, so everyone was was flocking with him, and then of course, mm-hmm. uh, Dirty Harry, um, he was Alicia Keys' DJ. Mm-hmm. So he I didn't know her, that. That's yeah, cool. yeah, at the mm-hmm. time, I mean, he 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 put her on one of his early joints, and they formed a relationship. But Damn, I didn't he, know that. I'm, I'm I'm hustling. I'm I'm networking. You know, I I get introduced to Bun B. I get on the phone with him, and he boom gives me a verse super wow. quick and. Because I'd imagine it would have been, sorry to cut but I'd imagine it had been hard for them to envision what you guys were actually doing. Well, not, not exactly, because a lot of them were fans of the Biggie mixtape. Oh, okay. Oh. So you already had that. We so had, we so had the that, second yeah. one was the one that had the features first. Yeah, the first one didn't have any features. Okay, it got it, blends. got it. Okay. Yeah, right. The second one had the real features, almost like a mini album. Right. Uh-huh. But um, yeah, no, we, we people were fans of the first one, so they were willing to jump on the second one. Right. Makes sense. And uh, yeah, man, it was, it was great at the time. Um, but I also realized that this is cool, but it's not exactly a career because right. it's bootleg. Right. Right. You only go so far with it. You know, you can't legally license it. You can't put it in a real store. It was right. just mom and pop stores. The mom and pop stores were going away. You, yeah. you know what's crazy? When you guys were putting mixtapes in the stores, I thought it was official. Nah. It nah. wasn't. <laughs> like, I, I didn't know there was Dude, nothing wrong with it. I was it, getting it, cease and desist letters from every label that was actually feeding me leaks. Yeah, but you didn't have you didn't have a MySpace back then where you were saying that and blowing that up. So I'm thinking this is legal. Yeah. When drama actually got raided, I was like, what for? Why? Well, that was when I stopped doing mixtapes. Okay, all right, cool. When I was watching... That, that was like know, the first Rico in hip-hop. When I you was know, seeing... First happened DJ here, Drama. Here, yo, the first you fucked it up, DJ Drama, I don't When, when I was seeing his BMW get put on the tow truck... <laughs> yeah, wild. Mm-hmm. ...and his bank accounts were seized, mm. and the warehouse was raided, I said, I am done. 
Right. I am done. This is this is real enough for me. Right. You know, because I was already having to put shit in other people's names, worried right. that there might be a oh, Fed oh, raid okay, and stuff wow. like that. And I because real like, money was being made with these mixtapes. Yeah. No. Yeah. I mean, for the, it, for for young kids. Yeah. I mean, not I for an adult. Not for no, an adult. No, for young yeah. kids at that time. I, I, I don't know if I'm blowing it up, but and if I, I is the one person that I saw getting real money. Off of the mixtape shit was DJ Clue. Clue yeah. was getting. I it, remember absolutely. Clue used to come yeah. pick me up in an MPV, and just like that, in two weeks, the MPV turned into a purple BMW, and then like yeah. just the cars just kept going, and I I saw it. I never um felt like I he owed me for me being like you know right. participating in it. You know right. I think the mixtapes helped us a, a lot. Yeah, it was a part of the culture. Right. So um. I'm bouncing around a little bit, right? right? But I was at a bar one night, right? Dude is drunk. He's talking to me. He knows he knows me from somewhere. He doesn't know where he knows me from, right? Two other people come up, take a picture. Maybe three people come, they take a picture of me. Guy's just sitting there. He's like, oh, shit, I know I know you from now. And then he gives me a five and he says, I'm a Navy SEAL. Off top, I don't, who the fuck, how the fuck can you prove you're a Navy SEAL or not, right? This guy is telling me all type of dramatic, crazy shit. One, I'm thinking, it can be true. Then on the other side, I'm like, this gotta be like, this guy throwing me off. I just met him in a bar. <coughs> but then I thought about it. If you are a Navy SEAL, you went through all of this shit. Now you're retired. Sometimes you want to talk about these war stories that you've been through. That you survived, right? That you survived. Yeah. Because not all veterans. I'm gonna a be lot honest. of them won't say anything. I'm gonna make it make sense now. The face that that guy had is the only face I've ever seen until I seen Keefe D. Am I making sense? <laughs> yeah. Because no, I, I, knew, I knew where you were going with this. Yeah, because yeah. to I, a I certain extent. If you do something that's so heroic, like I, you, you, you've seen this, this is something on Netflix where this guy kidnapped this girl and then they give somebody else the credit for it and the guy is so pissed, he's like, no, it was me. And I kind of, trying to, trying to make it all make sense, I kind of felt like that's what happened with KVD is like, he kind of wanted to tell his story. Even he wrote a book and no yeah. one even paid attention to it. Right. But on your platform, yeah. Which is huge. You don't force people on your platform. There's clearly cameras there. I can attest to that. Yeah. <laughs> there's clearly cameras here, like there's cameras here. You're wearing a wire, actually. <laughs> You're wearing You're a pulling, wire. You put it down your own shirt. <laughs> okay, so let's, yeah. so, so, so let's clarify for people who, that don't know the story, right? You're into content. So are you reaching out to KBD? Did you re read his book? How did this, how did this work? Well, well, before the KBD interview, Greg Kading, who was the LAPD officer, yep. got, you know, basically gave Keefe D a, a proffer agreement. A what? A proffer. Okay, so Keefe D... And that's the one who, who, who retired, who said right, he quit. Right, he okay, quit. yeah, so, so, so Keefe D, word was already out there that he was in the car that killed Tupac, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I even knew that. So, so Greg Kading, who was on, I believe, the Biggie Task Force, but was kind mm -hmm. of researching the whole, the whole Biggie, Tupac, you know... Okay. Whether there's some connection or not, he was following. He started investigating Keefe D, and he found that that Keefe had a whole PCP operation going. Mm -hmm. And considering the priors and the amount of PCP, Keefe would have probably done 25 years to life. Right. So what they did was they went to Keefe's house mm -hmm. and they said, "Look, we know about your operation. We have all our ducks in a row, but." Come in to talk with us, and we'll offer you some sort of deal. And this is after the Tupac murder, correct? This is after, yeah, years after the Tupac okay, murder. Okay, continue. So, Keefe met up with them, and they secretly recorded them, and they basically said, "Listen, a proffer agreement is it's also called Queen for a Day. It means that you Could tell me, anything. you tell me about all of these crimes I'm asking you about, and if you answer me truthfully, mm -hmm. you don't lie, and I I know some of the answers already." Everything you say, we can't turn around and use it against you. In that moment. In that moment, on that day. Right. And in exchange, all these other charges you're facing, we'll throw them out the window. Right. So in exchange for him telling the whole story about the Tupac murder, they threw out his PCP case. Okay. 
So essentially, they had all this information, and they tried to use him as an informant. They tried to send him to New York to, to set up Eric Von This is prior to your— This is way prior, okay, right? Yeah, okay, continue. All this happened. They, they, you know, they weren't able to, to implicate other people in it, whatever else. But since they had the proffer deal, and Keefe did what he was supposed to do, they dropped the PCP case, and it was over. Right. Ultimately, the Biggie uh, investigation, the lawsuit that uh, Valletta filed ended up getting dropped. Um, you know, Las Vegas didn't pick up the evidence from right. Greg Kading to try to implicate Keefe in the right. murder at that time. Everything got dropped. Everything got dismant dismantled. Uh, Greg Kading retired. And after he retired, he had some of that audio footage. And he told Keefe, I'm going to put this out and I'm going to write a book and put out a documentary or whatever else. So the audio of Keefe confessing to his role in the Tupac murder and implicating his nephew, Orlando Anderson, uh, got released. Okay. And it was floating around. I knew someone who knew Keefe D. Okay. They connected me with them and he had just written that book. Okay. So I had a copy of the book and I was talking to the writer. Because you got two interviews with him, right? Yeah, two. Okay, but I'm talking about the first one. Okay, the first one. So, cool. essentially, I got a copy of the book mm -hmm. as it was being released. He agreed to do the interview. You know, I paid him a little bit of money for mm -hmm. it. And the interview essentially follows the book mm -hmm. from beginning to end. But also, since I know the whole story. And you read the book prior. I read the book. Okay, ab yes. Absolutely. I read the book. And I also had interviews from other people mm -hmm. that were sort of in the know and related. You know, the outlaws. Right. You know, Edie, I mean, who was right. the car behind Tupac. Right. Chris Carroll, who was the first responder, and of course, Greg Kading, and then, you know, the Compton PD cops, they were also investigating it, and I'm, so I basically pieced together the whole story, and, and he basically said the whole thing. He basically reiterated what he said in the book. But I, right, but you're not thinking that of it. You're thinking like, all right, this is the book. Yeah. You do the first interview. Yeah. It, it's viral. Everyone is like, wow. Yeah. It's the first time we kind of see, like, a murderer kind of not admit but a murderer on camera, like kind of like, and then this, this is a this is a national, uh, excuse me, a worldwide murder. Yeah. No one thinks nothing of it. The first interview. Yeah. Well, people thought a lot of it. I mean, I mean you know what I mean. Views. You know what I mean. Yeah. What I meant was, but nothing happens to it. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Uh, there's no, yeah, authorities alerted. There's no nothing. Everyone yeah. goes under the cover. So how did how does the second interview come about? Well. Between that first interview and the second interview, he does a bunch of other interviews. Right. He does like Cam Capone News, and he does this other platform, he does this platform. So he's basically telling the story over and over again and putting in more details. He's like making it more graphic. He's saying Tupac was breakdancing when he got shot, trying to get Shit. in the back, in the, you know, in the back uh, right. seat. And it, it, was, it got more graphic. Right. You know, it got a little more <laughs> morbid. You know what I mean? So he's doing... He did probably I think even one time, pardon me, remember what you're saying. Uh, he said that Mike Tyson said something. He was like, yeah, man, tell Mike Tyson. Well, yeah. Well, I, I brought that up in the Mike Tyson interview. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? And Mike Tyson was like, yeah, that story sounds right. You know, he's like, I wish I had five minutes with, with this guy, you know, uh -huh. in a room. And he was like, yeah, you know, Mike Tyson need to be careful. I'm, I'm a gangster. Like, he's right. a boxer. You know what I mean? But, you know, Keefe's living his life. He's living in Vegas, right. which is where the murder occurred. Right. And, you know. Which is weird. Yeah, that's 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 because he theory. was he living in the Vegas. I, I don't know if you noticed or not. Was he living in the Vegas prior to that? Uh, I believe he was living in Vegas for a while. I mean, at the time the murder occurred, he was from L.A., from Compton. Okay, he was, okay. He was South, South <laughs> Side. I remember them saying they drove back together with, with the murder. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he was a South Side Crip, so mm -hmm. they they went back to Compton. But uh, yeah, I don't know how long he's been living in Vegas, but yeah, he's been living in Vegas for a while. Okay, so all right, boom. So the second interview comes up. Yeah. How do you approach this different from the first interview? I mean, that's always challenging. Did, did you know he was going to give you more? I mean, there really wasn't that much more. It was okay. kind of a fill in the blanks on okay. certain stories. It was kind of a reaction to this person saying mm -hmm. things about him. I mean, really, the first interview was the real, you know, storyline. Right. The second one just had a few pieces here and there. Not, not really a lot. You know, of course, people reacted to it because it's me and Keefe D. Right. But really, it's that first interview that told the story from essentially when he was born right. to... His relationship with Suge, him right. being a Southside Crip, his drug dealing days, his relationship right. with his nephew Orlando, right. what you know, the his interactions with Puffy and Biggie, right. what led up to them going to Vegas, what happened after Orlando got jumped, right. to the actual his role in the car and the shooting, and then going back, you know, and then the the bloodbath that happened in Compton because right. of the the murder and right. all that. So it kind of told the whole story from mm -hmm. beginning to end in a in a visual format. Was you shocked when you heard Suge say, 
I don't want him to go to jail. No, but that's Suge. Yeah, Suge yeah. doesn't cooperate. That was ever. hard. Yeah. So that that's hard. Suge is Suge. No, but he did sue Kanye. He did? That's yeah, cool. he sued. He did. Well, he also sued Akon's bodyguard. That's true. And he was going to press charges. But I think Suge picks and, picks and chooses. Yeah. You know what I mean? I don't, you know. Yeah. He, he didn't cooperate with the police. Right. You know, and, and, and like, for example, like the Greg Katings of the world feel that, because Suge is really like the only witness Right. That actually saw, you know, because because Keefe said that him and Suge locked eyes. Wow. But they'd known each other since wow. school. Yeah, 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 football. They played football yeah. together. And they locked eyes. Mm-hmm. So Suge could have been like, here's who did it. Right. Everyone's still alive in the car at the time. Right. He could have cooperated and everyone would have went to prison. But right. he did it. He did. So, and he still is not. All right. So, it is what it is. You had a relationship with Suge? Never met him. Never met him. Been in the same room with him, but... The thing with Suge is that everyone I know that's dealt with Suge has always had a negative story. It's always ended badly. You so I'm like, why Why would I bother? You, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I'm 50-50. There's a lot of people who swear by him. Yeah, I've heard a lot of positive Like, things. I kid you not, I, I don't know reputable, real people that say... I don't know a single human being that said that they have dealt with Suge and it's worked out at the end. Scott Storch. Okay. Cat Williams. Ja Rule. TK Kirkland. No, him, him and TK got into it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Him, him and TK okay. got into it. Okay, but... The other ones I don't know. Okay, so, yeah, yeah you're right. The, the, I swear to God, like, I... I and every, on my... <laughs> every time I see him, he's been a gentleman. I mean, yeah. maybe I'm lucky. Maybe I'm being overly cautious. Right. But, right. you know... Sometimes right. it pays to be overly cautious. Is this somebody that you was, uh, I don't know I'm bouncing around, but is this somebody that you wanted to meet in this industry and you met him and you was like, fuck them? <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot of people. Yeah, I got a lot too. Hmm. <laughs> not, not really so much of a fuck them. Okay. You know, you don't vibe with certain people. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. For whatever reason, the interview doesn't go according to, you know, when I interviewed Lil Wayne, we didn't, okay. it wasn't a good interview. Okay. This was early on. This was during my DVD days. Um, it was just like, he just wasn't feeling me. Mm-hmm. No matter what I asked him, I got a one-word answer. <coughs> I walked away feeling like, you know you, you know what it's like when you, when you right. don't get the interview you were hoping to get right. over someone you admire. You just walk away feeling kind of right. a little off. Right. So, you know, yeah, me and Wayne didn't, didn't vibe, and right. that's life. Right. You know, it's not like, fuck him. I don't, I don't feel that way. It's just like, right. yo, he wasn't feeling me, and... It is what it is. So let me ask you, what's the method of your interviews, right? See, um, one thing I'm a, I want to give, <clears throat> want to give this the method somewhat to our interviews is Leo Cohn used to, when I used to go see Leo Cohn, he wouldn't take a meeting nowhere else unless you came to him. Okay. He wanted to be the man when you walked in the room. <laughs> so the thing about it is, one thing that we learned early on, I believe it was our French Montana, T.I. In the studio. Ace that Rocky session. We went to their studio and we realized we couldn't tell people to shut up. We couldn't tell people to like, move this way. Get out the camera because we're actually in someone else's studio. Right. We had no control. You understand? The environment. Yeah. So one of the art tricks is like, yo, you know what? No matter what, they have to come to us now. Like they got to come to us be in our environment, whether it's, it's the comfortability they have with us or the uncomfortability. What is one of the things that you have to do if, if, if it's a Vlad interview? I have to prepare. Okay. I have to spend a long time researching. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, if I get a last minute call, mm-hmm. I mean, of course, you know, you, you're going to make exceptions. Right, right. <laughs> you know, if Eminem calls me right now and says, I want to meet right now, and this right. is your only opportunity, of right. course, I'm going right. to do whatever to, to make that happen. But, How about but I, R. Kelly? Well, I've interviewed R. Kelly. Yeah. Over the phone in jail. Okay, but right now R. Kelly get, got free. You going? You going? You going to Chicago to see him? Yeah, I'll go to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go to Chicago. <laughs> yeah, I'll go to Chicago. Okay, I think I got another drink. Let's go. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but but in general, it's it's the research. Uh-huh. You know, and a lot of times, you know, Vlad is the feds. Mm. Is because there's so much research that goes into mm. what we do. Like for example, there's that famous little baby interview mm. where he was like. How you know that? Right. And it's like, well, I've watched all your other interviews. Right. So, and there's bits and pieces I pick out of it. You know how it is. You've done so many interviews. You don't remember everything you said. Right, of course. And then someone brings something up and you're like, did I say that? How how do you know that? 
Right. And, but it, it's the research. Right. And, and I felt like when I got into hip hop media, I, I just felt that the, the, all the interviewers at the time, I'm not talking about right now, I'm just talking about at the time, right. like they all sucked. Right, right. It was all like promo. Right. It was like a PR run. It was right. like, hey, let me tell them how great you are. Right. Here's a new album, bye. And it, you walk <laughs> away with nothing. Right. But my thing was like, yo, I'm going to research and I'm going <laughs> to. You know, like when people talk in the barbershop, I'm asking those type of questions, the questions right. people really want to ask, the uncomfortable questions, the, the hard questions. So I research, I research, I research. I watch every other interview they've done. Right. If they have a book, I'll read the book. Right. If we know some people in common, I'll call those people up right. and I'll have conversations with them. Like, you right. know, uh, and then plus, you know, like I'm 50 now. I've been around since hip hop was born. You right. know what I mean? So hip-hop I have is a, 50. Yeah, you know, so it's kind of like, I know as being like a lifetime hip hop fan, I know everything that happened in hip hop mm-hmm. to a certain, you know, every Source magazine, every Double XL magazine. Mm-hmm. I, I read every one cover to cover. So I know a lot of stuff just in my memory banks I could pull out. Right. So, so, so that's, you know, the answer to your question is research. Right. I have to have a lot of research. And that's what I think makes my interviews a little different than other people's. And one thing about you, like I, I would say 75% of your guests, if they make an appearance and it's a success, you have them back on. Right. You have them as repeated guests. It's the core of our business, man. Right. It's the core. And, you know, people like to, you know, oh, this person again. But, you know, when it comes to interviews, and, you know, we don't have deals with other companies. We don't have sponsorship deals. We don't have TV deals where it's like we get some huge check and we just push it and whatever happens now. Nah, like, mm. our stuff is based on the views. Right. You know, you know how people say, oh, I'm going to clip up. You know, I'm, I'm going to do a clip on this interview. We were doing clips in 2008. Wow. You know, when, when the idea in the beginning was like, if I have an hour and a half interview, I'm going to five, 10 minute clips every wow. day, every day. Mm-hmm. And, you know, someone else is going to do it. I might as well do it. You know, a lot of really incredible parts of an interview gets buried in an hour and a half. Right. And no one will ever see it. My thing was like every important part, we're going to put it out. So so, so that that's the whole premise of it and this is kind of how we put the whole thing together but a lot of it is like I said it's just based on the research of it mm-hmm. one point me and you speak all the time right yeah and I remember you you saying man that's just rappers and I like 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 Someone like we was talking and, and like, it's personal. It's personal. Yeah, yeah. And and someone saying like, oh, and I'm like, nah, Vlad. Me explaining it to you, it's not really rappers. That's, well, well so tell me the premise. Of well, it was the premise. Just, we were talking about somebody that we both had a, in common, like a friend. Okay. I believe he was on 36th Street or what, what office was he was at on 30? Yeah, we, we were at a WeWork at one point. I think oh, like, yeah. Okay, and uh, you, we, we were speaking and he was just like, hey man, your boy didn't show up, man. These, these guys got goddamn rappers. And I remember me saying to you, no man, don't label it all rappers. It's just certain times, it's certain individuals who are fucked up individuals who like, like, like if a DJ, if one DJ don't show up, I can't say fuck all DJs, all these DJs. Yeah. Is that something that you, you've learned to work with? You, you learn to accept it. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I, I guess because I wasn't always in hip hop. Mm-hmm. You know, I came in the tech world. You know, mm-hmm. I have a computer science degree from UC Berkeley, and I'm used mm-hmm. to, I've worked for Intel, you know, and Autodesk and, and big companies and everything else like that. And in those type of businesses, people are on time. Yes, yes. Right? People are professional yes. and so forth. Coming to hip hop, being a half hour, an hour late, yeah, is normal. It's considered that's, yeah, that's the cool. new normal, and it you know it's not it's something that I've never really gotten comfortable with. Appreciate because like I mean look at me today. What time? Yeah, yeah, I got yeah. here early. Yes, 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 yes. Right, yeah, like, I was I, rushing I, through here. No, and, 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 but my whole thing is like. I, I guess that I value other Thanks. people's time. Yeah, me too. And they don't always value my time. All right. And in hip hop, it's just a little more commonplace, mm-hmm. unfortunately. You know what I'm but, saying? But you could always. Thank you. Like I could always tell a rapper that's a business rapper, because oh, we make bets. Or oh, who's on time? <laughs> okay. <laughs> who's on time? <laughs> I clearly lost to G Herbo yesterday uh, on Monday. I bet that he was going to be on time. Lost. Who? G Herbo. Okay. He, he came late, and he had a hit a couple of excuses while he was late. It was cool. And he, but you know what's crazy? 
I was the late guy. Yeah. Until I waited. Oh, I can't stand it. Oh, me waiting on somebody? Oh, I can't stand yeah. it. It, it. It blows. It blows the energy. Yeah. Because we're sitting there like I'm ready to turn up and this guy comes. It's been a couple of times, man. Whew. They come late and whew. I don't want to give them a five. I don't want to hug them. I don't want to look make eye contact. Because I'm like, yo, bro, you know me. And, yeah. um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, this shit is crazy. But, 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 but black, I mean, I, mean I just want to say this. Yeah. What's the most valuable thing in this world? It's time. Time. You can't right. get it back. Right. Well, nah, we want I, you I to... can lose some money and I can make it back. Why? But that time I lost <laughs> waiting for someone. Why? Or worse, even worse, a cancellation when you, right. you've spent money and time and, and there's, you know, we have 20 people in our company. There's a lot of people that are, that are working to make this happen and then the person doesn't show up. Who's someone who canceled on you? Dude, 24 hours, just decided not to show up. That's his name, 24 hours? Yeah, he used to be called something else. Just didn't show up. Okay. Asian doll just didn't show up. Oh, wow. Um, trying to think who else. I can't. You know, those are the two that kind of just. You know what I mean? Wow. And they just. Uh, Tom Hanks' son, Chet Hanks. Chet didn't, Hanks fronted on you. Didn't show oh, up. Hanks son didn't what was he? Bum 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 clotted? Yeah, that dude. He was in Jamaica. Yeah. Just just didn't feel like it. All right. Wow. And it's, it's kind of it's a slap in the face because right. you're losing. Thousands of dollars and right. time that you can never get back. And you know, right. me, I've sometimes spent right. a few days just researching and right. preparing, and right. poof, out the window. Terrible. So you know, yeah, man, it's time. The most valuable thing. I can yeah. never get it back. Now that's real shit, man. Well, Vlad, we went. We were so. I, I'm gonna be honest. I'm so happy you came to, uh, came to see us because one, um, you are a legend, and what you did. Like, I want to tell you face-to-face, -face, man to man, I've been a part of it. You changed the way hip-hop has been, you know, covered. You changed it all. You 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 interviewed them. There was nobody else doing that. You was behind the scenes. It's the only difference. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? That yeah. uh, uh, people don't call you the hip-hop pod god. It's because you didn't actually put yourself on camera. But I love the fact that you, you put yourself on camera. I love the fact. And you know what? You deserve every accolade. Our show is about giving people their flowers, and I want to give you your flowers. I've been wanting to do this. I've been wanting to do this. Listen, I've been wanting to do this since the beginning of Drink Champs eight years ago. You know what I mean? I've always wanted to sit down with you because what you do for hip hop, a lot of people don't understand that. You put people in the forefront. You don't ask people, you know, to, to go to these places that they want to go. But if they do it, you do it, right? But you deserve all that. You are motherfucking hip hop pillar, and we motherfucking love and respect. And, and I just, I just wanna, um, I just wanna apologize to you mm. for not being on here sooner, mm. because a few years ago right. you had asked me to be on the show, yes, I did. and. Because I had a big ego right. and you had an ego, right. it turned into. No, I didn't have an ego. It's your ego. It's, it's, just, like, it's, it's, just, your, it's your apology. It's your apology. Okay. Let's, right. let's keep That's it fine. on you. Let's keep right. it on you. Well, I, my, I got mine later. Because of my ego. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, because I remember I, I was explaining this, like Sam Sneed called me up mm -hmm. and he was like, mm -hmm. we were talking about doing an interview mm -hmm. and. Um, he was like, yeah, I want to do your show and uh, mm -hmm. I want to do Drink Champs. You and Nori are cool. And I'm like, not really. Right. Mm -hmm. At the time, we weren't. Right. He goes, why? And I explained it to him. And at the end of the explanation, I felt so stupid. Right. I was like, that was just the dumbest right. reason right. that me and Nori, who were actually friends right. yes. up until that point, yes. Yes. like, this is why we're not cool. And I'm like, this right. is dumb. Like, this is not like a real beef. Like, I've had real beef in my life. Mm -hmm. This is not that. Mm -hmm. It was just an ego thing. Mm -hmm. And that's when I reached out to you not too long after. I love that. It took us about a year I, for us to kind of. I love that. Let's make some noise. <laughs> By the you know, way, you know, I mean, that's what that's what men men is about. Like sometimes, yeah. we, we, you know what? You can't. Someone told me this other day. They said you can't make a misunderstanding out of the misunderstanding. 
The misunderstanding is just a misunderstanding. Yeah. I, that shit made no sense in all the sense to me in the world. You can't make a misunderstanding out of the misunderstanding already. It's just a misunderstanding. Leave the shit alone. You know what I mean? Leave the shit alone. And uh, I appreciate, respect you, man. Um, uh, let, let's so, so we gave him his flowers. We're gonna play quick time before we play quick time slime. How the fuck did you build this chemistry with Boosie? <laughs> like, I don't. Yeah. Okay. So before Vlad TV mm -hmm. was the Hot in Here DVDs, mm. which came around the time of the Smack DVDs. Mm. As I was transitioning out of mixtapes because, you know. CDs were going away. The mom and pop stores were going away. Mm -hmm. uh, I was like <coughs> doing, you know, I, I started doing DVDs, like street DVDs, mm -hmm. where I would get freestyles, do interviews, everything else like that. And I would go to labels and I went to Atlantic Records. He was on Atlantic at the time. Boosie and Webby had just gotten signed right. to Atlantic. Wipe me down. Yeah. Uh, but before Wipe Me Down. Before Wipe Me before, Down. Yeah, you, you should see how, like, I have videos of this on my YouTube channel. Like, Boosie looks is like a little kid. He looks right. like he's about 17. Um, and I interviewed Boosie and Webby mm -hmm. holding the camera, you know what I mean? The whole thing. And me, me and Boosie kind of formed, you know, me kind of formed that early, early relationship. And then, you know, later on, when Vlad TV started to get legs, we did an interview, and that was the Hypnotized with Hatred interview. Mm. And that just went super viral. Like people still say that to this day. And then we do one interview and it reacts. And we do another interview and it reacts. And the numbers just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. You know, we've had interviews that are like 20 million views combined right. and anything else like that. And after a while, it just became a mutual respect thing. It became a business relationship. Yep. You know, he um, bigged you up on our show too. Yeah. And yep. I be, I, I'm bigging him up right now. Yep. That, that, that's my man. You know, right. I've been to his house. Right. You know, it, it was, it was like we, and it just turned into something like, for whatever reason, the chemistry between us, people just react to it more so than any of my other regular guests. Right. And you know, we just kept doing it and doing it. Now it's like we almost try to have Boosie running all the time. Right. One, you know, we do one interview. It's like whatever, 30, 40 parts. At the time it ends, we'll go do another one and then that'll keep running. And then, you know what I'm saying? And, and right. everyone just benefits from it. Right. Nah, I, I ain't gonna lie. You got me tuned in. And, and I like, I love the fact that it's never repetitive. It's always something new. You always come with something fresh and new. Right. And I'm sitting there like, how much more Boosie can I have? Right. And then you manage to say, oh, no, you need more Boosie. Right. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, I, I did need more Boosie. <laughs> like, I did. Like, I, 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 it's, it's so entertaining. Um, is that your favorite guest you ever had? My favorite guest? Yeah. Who's your favorite? Don't tell me Aaron Hall. <laughs> That hole was wild like shit. Um, I mean, it means, that's a hard question to answer. Okay. Right? Because me and Boosie consistently get the biggest reaction. Okay. Um, but it's not like I grew up listening to Boosie. Right. You know what I mean? And, and there's something that's to be said about when you fall in love with music before it becomes your career. Mm. Right. And when you interview someone, it, it, before before it's for the money and, right. and you're doing it for the views and the money and the cloud or whatever else, it's, it's pure love. Right. You, you're sitting there with your headphones in your in your bedroom listening to a song over and over again, and, and you know what I mean. So, you know, like interviewing um, Smokey Robinson mm -hmm. was uh, was a moment. Mm -hmm. You know, um, sitting in when when Lou Dell interviewed Shaka Khan. Was was a moment mm. interviewing Mike Tyson. Was was a moment, was even though he scared? well he got mad at me at one point. So yeah, yeah. I was scared. Wait, wait. oh, wait. He, he interviewed you? No, I interviewed him. Okay, and I asked the wrong question. What happened? What yeah, okay. Ask? So <clears throat> it was actually a Zab Judah interview. Okay, right. So we go to Mike Tyson's uh, gym in L.A., and Zab Judah was the one that that was doing the interview. And and but I'm there, and I I, I for, you know when, even when other people do interviews for us, I, I work with them on the questions. Okay, right. So he goes to the whole interview, he does his thing, and then uh, I'm like, hey, do you mind if I jump in and ask a few questions? And Mike's like, yeah, cool, no, because Mike knew who I was right. and he knew some of the people I interviewed, whatever yeah. else. And uh, you know, you know me, I'm gonna 
push the envelope a little bit, right? So, so we're in, you got to understand that the setting, we're doing the interview inside of his actual boxing ring. Okay. So I'm in the ring with Mike Tyson, yeah, literally. Is that gloves on? No, no, oh, no, there's no glove on, but we're, you know, about yeah. as far as, right. you know, me and AFN, we're th this close to each other in chairs doing the interview. And, you know, I started getting into a little bit of the harder questions. And, and one of my questions was, well, Mike, you know, here you are, you're worth hundreds of millions of dollars. You know, why are you attracted to these street guys like Eric Von Zipp? And he said, what do you mean by attracted? <laughs> and I wish so bad I had a time machine to go back <laughs> and change my words. <laughs> and, you know, you see that, like, pissed off Mike Tyson. And I'm like, and I got to talk my way out of this situation. Because my security is way over there. He's not going to get to me in time. If Mike lunges at me. And your security might think twice. Might might not even yeah. do it. <laughs> I'm being honest. You know? That's Mike. And That's Mike, Mike. think twice. Like, man, yeah, is it like, uh, <laughs> You're not paying me enough to do that. <laughs> Fuck that. <laughs> yeah, so so uh -huh. I got to, you know, I got to dance my way out of this question and, and explain to him I didn't really mean it that way. Right. And then at one point he got it. And then we went on with the interview. Right. But it was a moment. It was a tense moment. It made for good television, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it was... Mike Tyson is still Mike Tyson. Listen, and he man, knows when to, he could turn it on. This man never got high in his life. Mike Tyson gave him a mushroom and a gummy and he took it. He said, <laughs> eat that shit. <laughs> said, damn right, right. you damn right I'm gonna eat that shit. <laughs> he was like, holy shit. Holy That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying, man. That's Mike Tyson. But that was a moment as well. It's like, yo, Mike Tyson, for people of my era, that's the Muhammad Ali of our era. Of course. I tell you some funny shit. I'm going through Saudi, no, not Saudi Arabia. I'm going through Dubai. I see Mike. <laughs> Everybody's they're like Mike Tyson. He's just looking. He's just looking. Just intimidated walking through the airport. And I'm like, it was Norris. He's like, oh shit. So he turns around. He takes a picture. Very next day, I see a van in the Holy Fair. Yeah, I just interviewed him. About a I month know. Ago, yeah, that's why I brought it up. So give me your, give me your uh, uh, alley you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How, how was it, you interviewing a van in the Holy Fair? It was dope, man. It, it was dope. Like. He's such a, a class act. Did he talk about his moms? Absolutely. He, oh, listen. Yeah. Uh, he, he's a big fan of his, his, his mama's. Yeah, but my mama was definitely a, yeah. a phrase. Yeah. I, I think one of the, the interesting points that he made in that interview was when he was in the Olympics, mm -hmm. he kind of got robbed. He got a bad call. Okay. Because we heard this story. He ended up winning. Yeah. Hold on. Look, 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 look. Okay, tell, tell the story, tell okay, the story. Okay, so during one of the fights, he had a bad call, and he ended up winning the bronze mm -hmm. instead of the gold, which okay. he ultimately deserved. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I said, well, did you think to act out, whatever else? He goes, nah. Because if I would have, my mom was my right mom there. Was right there, yep. If I would have acted out, she would have jumped into the ring and slapped me in front uh, of the whole world. Right. And she would always tell me, you're not the only one that's going through this. Uh -huh. Don't don't think you're special and you're the only one that goes through trials and tribulations. Like, right. take it like a man. Uh, and, and that was sort of the theme. You know, he he had losses. Yeah. You know, he, 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 he wasn't mad at Mike Tyson for biting off part of his ear. Yeah, he forgave him. Yeah. That's that's a they lot. Got, they got an air company yeah. together. They got they, they, yeah, they like a gummy, yeah, like a gummy, gummy ear. ear. Yeah. yeah, man. It's, I, it's, I had him. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I had him. Yeah, I mean, it was just so you know, it, like like that mansion, mm. you know, that he used to own. Mm. The reason why he lost that mansion was because his sister took a second mortgage behind his back mm -hmm. on that mansion, mm -hmm. and then by the time he found out. He was millions and millions in debt. Damn. Wow. And he never pressed charges. Mm. Right, he just let that go. Mm. You know what I'm saying? To lose the house that you think you're going to pass on to your right. grandkids mm. from your own family member and to not feel angry about it, bitter about it, not to retaliate on any level. Yeah, man. It, it's, it's a... it's a. We all strive to that, that level yeah, of elevation. he's a bigger man than most. Yeah. Right. Put it like this. I see him... Uh, all the time. I don't he lives always, out here. I don't always speak to him because he's just an intimidated guy. But, but he's not really intimidating. Not at all. Once not he at all, yeah. his mouth. But 
If he doesn't open his mouth, he's very intimidated. Trust me. Yeah. He walks around like this. <laughs> and you like, most of most people could get the fuck out of his way. Yeah. By the way, who wouldn't? Right. Yeah. But great guy. Uh, met him. You were there, Ross, right? He, oh, I can't even... I can't even reveal nothing. Let's so, so change the subject. Holy moly, guacamole. Boom. Quick time. Quick time of slime. Let me go to the bathroom. Yeah, me the bathroom too. break real quick. Yeah, yeah cause the, the quick time of slime, I don't think it's gonna be quick. Two. Right, so how does okay. it work with rules one more time? Okay, okay. So explain it one more time, EFN. So you're gonna get two choices. <laughs> yeah. So it's this or this. Yeah. And you could say you pick one and nobody drinks. Or you say both or neither. If you say the politically correct one, which is you basically don't want to pick one. Everybody drinks. Then we yeah, all drink. And yeah. if if somebody we're talking about inspires you, have a story with them, please yeah. This, yeah. elaborate, yeah. tell got us it. a story. You know, got it. Got it. Okay. Got it. You ready? Yep. Joe Button or Fat Joe? <laughs> Fat Joe. <laughs> oh, that was hard. Tupac or DMX? Tupac. Clue or Funk Flex? Funk Flex. Tony Touch or Doo Wop? Doo Wop. Yeah, this is easy. <laughs> Go ahead. Dirty Harry or SNS? Dirty Harry. Soul Assassins or Hieroglyphics? Soul Assassins. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 wait. Take a that's shot. A, that's a tough one. Both. Okay, take a shot. <laughs> it's not yeah, no, no. no, no I, I had to think about that for a second. So, <laughs> I respect that. And if you got some stories behind Yeah, we, we told him that. Thanks a lot, Mr. Lee. <laughs> so shout out, shout out to Be Real, man. Um, well, I mean, I, I've interviewed both of those dudes. And I, I, I didn't know your love for, for, for Cypress Hill until just now, but go ahead. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, um, it, it, it's funny because the, the, there's, a, there's a photo. I was a, a super huge Soul Assassins fan. Wow. I, I think I smoke weed because of Cypress Hill. Wow. You know what I mean? Like, cause, cause Cypress Give him a Hill, joint, man. The Cypress Hill made smoking cool. Why? You know, at least in my eyes. And yeah. them and Redman, I feel like that yeah. era was them yeah, and Redman. But for right. me, like Cypress kind of kind of connected yeah. a little bit, and like Cypress came before Redman, though, right? Yes. Yeah. Right. Okay. Like, but it's like for right first there. album. Yeah. yeah. Okay. For first album. Um, but getting to me, be real, mm -hmm. and hanging out backstage. Like we both got high backstage, and there's a picture of us, and we looked like twins. What? My head, my head was shaved. What? Both of our heads were shaved at that time, what? and we both like high as hell in this photo. You look like you were part just, of the Soul we, we Assassins. Like, I look like I was part of the Soul. Like we look like twins. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But mm -hmm. I, uh, you know, I, I got to interview. Legend. I got to interview hieroglyphics as well, man. And, and those oh, yeah. those dudes really, like I said, seeing them in Berkeley kind of really got me. To, to thinking that hip hop is attainable on some level, right, I could actually right. see them right in front of me. You know, I could give them a pound and anything else like that. So, so both of them have a significant yeah, role in my life. So I, I got I got to say both. I respect that. Wu Tang or NWA? I'm getting N -W -A. my shot. NWA. 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 Holy N shit. NWA. 100. percent Because okay. in fact, like I'm gonna tell you, there's there this one point. Because I was a hip hop head from elementary school mm -hmm. through junior high. But then in junior high, I got in some trouble. Okay. Like I got into, you know, me and this this one kid started getting into it, and then the vice principal got involved, and he the vice principal started threatening me, started saying he'll like bash my head in the wall and wow. like that type of you know, to like a little kid was was kind of fucked yeah, up. Harsh. And and my parents were like, We're taking you out of this this public school and we're gonna put you in this private school mm -hmm. because we're not gonna deal with this this fuck shit. So I got put in a school, a private school, where nobody listened to hip hop. Wow. And you know, if, if none of your friends are listening to hip hop, you slow, you slowly start to, you know, get into more of the music they're listening to and so mm -hmm. forth. So I started to kind of lose interest a little bit in hip hop and not listen to it quite as much. And then I heard Easy es first album. And it was like, oh my God, what is What was the name this? of the album? Easy Does Easy It? Easy Does It. Does it does Boys it. in the Hood. Just that whole Who's album, you know, Dre, hearing Dre for the first time. Is that what he said? I want to fuck you. I want to fuck you, too. Yeah. yeah. We love you, Easy. Yeah, yeah. we love you, Easy. <laughs> I want to fuck you, easy. Oh, yeah, I want to fuck you too. Yeah. That really was that one. No on shit, That's the line that stuck out for you. Who we fucking I'm with? <laughs> that that shit. And so NWA <laughs> held such a, an important role in my development. And Wu Tang is dope. No, right. come on, like Wu Tang is Wu Tang. Thank you. Right. Lighter. Yeah. The ashtray. Uh, yes. Um. But you know, and and of course, this is an East Coast West Coast thing to a mm -hmm. certain degree. I understand living in New York like you. Wu Tang has a different. No, I'm gonna no? be honest with you. Okay. 
Uh, that's why I got my shot ready. I can never choose between NWA and Wu Tang. Oh, you can't. To me, they had the same impact on me because of NWA. I didn't. I didn't see their videos. I don't know. Maybe I was poor or something like. I didn't get to identify with all of their videos. But then Wu Tang, I got to see their videos, so I got to appreciate it more because I got to hear it. But I got to appreciate NWA a little more because I didn't have access to everything. Mm. You know what I mean? I didn't. Um, and like, I, I always say this on the show. I thought Compton was a jail. <laughs> I didn't know that was a place because it was like how Coogee Rap described Rikers Island. Yeah. It's like, why kids out? I'm like, I don't want to go there. I didn't want to go to Compton. I was just like, wait a minute, Compton? Straight out of Compton. Crazy motherfucker named Ice, Ice Cube. Cube. I said, that jail cell is crazy. Like, yeah, I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want to go to there. Come to find out that's a, that's a real neighborhood. Holy moly guacamole. Yeah, All right, man. cool. We moving on? Yeah. Let's do it. Kid okay. Capri or Red Alert? Red Alert. Camera or Mace? Camera. Napster or LimeWire? Napster. Now right or on Smash? Now right. This is very easy. Yeah. Okay. New York City Breakers or Rock City Crew? New York City Breakers, because that was that was the ones that that I got. You know, not living in New York, those are the ones who I saw on TV, and that's who inspired me to break dance. On David Letterman, right? I don't know where it was. You know what I mean? Like you, you. It was television. There was no on demand. You don't. Mm-hmm. Something's on. You don't even know where it's from. Right. Yeah. New York City Breakers got me to breakdance. So yeah, absolutely. New York right. City Breakers. Wild Star or Beat Street? Mm. Uh, Beat Street. I-, I saw that in the theaters. I did not. Great, great, great movie. MTV great. Raps or Rap City? MTV Raps. Yo, MTV Raps has had such an important role in my life. You know, I watch almost every episode. Yeah. You know, and the fact that I got to interview Fab Five, Freddy, and oh, Andre. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, that, 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 that was a lot. That, that was a lot. Because, you know, at the time, that was the only, you know, living in the West Coast, you didn't have Ralph McDaniels. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So you didn't get to see that. Yo, MTV Raps was the only right. visuals that you saw of hip-hop. Right. You know, and, you, and I would watch... Kids break dancing the music videos, and I would sit there and try to do it myself. Well, on yeah. your MTV raps, on your MTV raps, is that because there was no other place to watch hip hop videos but right. your MTV raps? Right. That was the only game in town. Too short or E forty? Let's take the shot, Vlad. Both. Yeah, let's take the shot. <laughs> I gotta advise you on that yeah, one. Both. <laughs> yeah, please take the shot. You know, and I, I'm from the Bay, and, mm. and you know, I'll be honest. Um, I was listening to. I was a Too Short fan. Before I was an E40 and the Click fan, mm-hmm. uh, and me, me and well, me and me and both those dudes have relationships now. But you know, Dauphine B, I think was like one of the the, the greatest Bay Area hip hop songs of all time. Mm-hmm. Just the, the energy of that song and the uniqueness of it. Um, you know, Freaky Tales, like the whole life is too short and Born to Mac. Right. Oh, it's just epic album, but, but you can't you can't down downplay what E40 has pulled right. off, man. E- E40 created so much slang. And, Tell me, where they go? I don't know. I'm yeah, just, that's part. all that, man. Yeah. You know, and uh, yeah, but both them dudes, I, I still keep in contact with. And, you know, being Bay Area, yeah, I'm not gonna, right. I'm not gonna divide the Bay. Nah, you can't. You can't. <laughs> I'm, I'm, you I'm can't. a drink. Was the last time you been in the Bay? Last year. Okay. Last year, I try. I try to go there once a year or so. I went to the Bay last year. They told me, "Don't leave your charger in the car." I was like, "My charger." Oh, they, they, <laughs> for the first time ever in life, in, a fucking In and Out Burger got shut down. In Oakland. Uh, oh, that's where it was in Oakland. In Oakland, because of the crime. Because I guess it's by oh, the airport. Right. And people were literally like robbing people in their cars and popping their trunks and taking their suitcases, and it became so unsafe that In and Out has announced they're shutting down that In and Out. I've never heard of an In and Out shutting down. No, in and Out don't close. No, they don't. They don't close. Yeah, because everything else closed. In and Out. Who the hell is staying? Yo, it is. Oh, leave it to Oakland to fuck up an In and Out. Didn't a court system shut down as well? Only place in America that a court didn't open because there was so much drugs and so much shit outside that they didn't um, want to open the courthouse is was in. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't want to coast. Yeah, that. I, I, you might be right. Yeah, yeah, I, I yeah. Just, I, I didn't necessarily hear that story, but yeah, you know, I, I mean, there's I, I heard a lot it. of fucked up shit that happens. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, but but the in and out thing was just like, God damn, like. Here's this bulletproof company that literally shut down. 
But you're gonna skip over the fact that my friend told me don't leave a charger in the car. A charger. I, I mean, it wasn't even the plug-in charger. It was just the USB part. <laughs> like he was like, no, don't leave that they shit in there. Break him Gazi. for that. Pick up Gazi from Empire Records. I'm sorry. Yeah. He, he yelled. I never heard Gazi yell. He was like, take everything out of the car. Jeez. I was like, what? <laughs> like he's like everything. I was like, it's a wire. He's like, they're busting your car for a wire. They, they, they I'm break, like, no. I remember what was it Lil Pete? I interviewed this this Bay Area artist, and he was describing how. They break windows using uh, spark plugs. Yeah. yeah. Boop. And then the whole window just shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then just... I ain't gonna lie, as a Puerto Rican, I used to do that too. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> yeah, that's an old technique. In Shea Stadium, I used to do that. But I was so shocked they still doing it. I'm like, yeah. what? Like, like, oh, holy moly guacamole. But... Next. Huh? Next, let's go. Podcast or radio? Podcast. Yeah, you can do that one. Kiss or Fab? Fabulous. Jay-Z or Nas? Jay-Z. MPC 60 or MPC 2000? MPC 60, because that, that was actually the machine that I uh, spent a lot of my time making beats on. Not to say I was great at it. I was right. okay. But, but the MPC 60. And I, I tried it, the MPC 2000, I think even the 3000. Mm. But the MPC 60, something about that, the feel of that. That machine? Is, is just unequivocal. Beastie Boys or Fat Boys? Definitely Beastie Boys. Mm. Be- Beastie Boys was like, you know, like, like that first album, License to Ill. I mean, in fact, I'll, t- I'll tell you this. I was a huge Beastie Boys fan, but... Um, when I got my first car, a Nissan truck, the first car I ever owned, the first cassette that I played in that car was Beastie Boys' Paul's Boutique. Paul's Boutique. And I played the shit out of that album. That was such an underrated... Is that No Sleep Too Brooklyn? No, 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 that's no, the first that's album. A, the, okay. Yeah, that's second the, album. Yeah, great album. The, the, the Dust Brothers, the production level yeah. was... Like on a completely different yeah. level, and, and and that was an album that was kind of slept on, probably one of their worst selling albums. Yep. But but the brilliance behind that, the way the beats were layered, the way they would finish off each other's raps, like 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 the the structuring of, of the three of them working together. You know what I mean? Because we live in a world of people make music. And then they send someone an MP3, and then they do the verse, and yep. then, you know the yep. person who did the verse yeah, yeah, doesn't even yeah. hear the song until later on. No, like they were literally in there together. writing together, layering we are the, the shit. world type shit. Yeah, that type right. of shit. Definitely Beastie Boys. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the Fat Boys. You know, I, I interviewed um, the Cool Rock. Yeah, the, 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 the Diesel nigga now. The, the cool Rock scene. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Cool Rock. Because the other two passed workers. away. Prince yeah. Marky D and uh, Buster right, passed people. away. So I, I got to interview him, and I have a lot of respect. For the Fat Boys, but easy, the Beastie Boys. All right. Easy. Analog or digital? Digital. I didn't expect that. Digital. Suge Knight or Puff? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I'm tell gonna, stories if you want or anything. Uh, okay. You picking right. one, though? All right, yeah. Well, I, I would... I don't really have a connection to either one of them, so I'm going to say neither. So you take a uh, shot. All right, cool. Yeah. Hold on. You just salute, motherfucker. Sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a puffy story I haven't told before. Okay, cool. Y'all going to get the exclusive on this. No problem. So, you know, listen, when you're, when you don't have a lot of money, you don't have a lot of money to buy clothes, you rely on these clothing companies giving you clothes, mm-hmm. right? And I hooked up with this really dope one called Stalin Dean. Stalin you know Dean. Are? Oh, yeah, yeah. The they sports did, like, company. The, yeah, they did like the throwback jackets, yeah. like the old like teams, like the Negro League teams and everything else mm-hmm. like that. And um, I remember um, uh, my man Rikers from Stalin Dean. I haven't seen him in a while, man. Shout out to his Rikers. His name is Rikers? His name is Rikers. Well, his nickname. I don't know what his real name is. Hold on, hold on. His mama ain't named No, Rikers. no, no. But that was right. what right. everyone knew cool. about. Just- I'm yeah. about to say, let, his name is Rikers. Right. His mom. So, so Rikers used to always give me this dope, dope, dope gear. I remember he gave me like the the USSR hockey jersey, wow. the knit hockey jerseys. And I remember I came in once, and he gave me this brown bombers jacket, mm-hmm. right, with like the matching hat, going. right. And I, I was feeling 
fresh to death, mm -hmm. right? So, so we're in this club, and Puffy's in the club. And Puffy sends his man to go uh, talk to me. He's like, yo, man, I work for Puffy. I'm like, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, man, um, Puffy really loves that jacket you're wearing. <laughs> he wants to know if you want to sell it to him. Huh? So I'm not going to sell my fucking jacket. I'm going to take it <laughs> What kind, of, what kind of question is that? Like, I was gonna take off my jacket and put, give it to another man. Like, what the fuck? Okay, like, what kind of jacket is this? Though? It was a brown bombers okay, jacket. Like, it was a brown, brown, you know, kind There's of no name brand to it. No, well, Stalin Dean. Okay, Stalin Dean. But it said okay, brown okay, okay, bombers okay, okay, on the back. Okay, okay and it was okay. like the actual logo mm -hmm. of, I believe, it was a Negro team. Mm. You know, like like a Negro football team uh, of that okay. era. Okay. Um, and it was a dope jacket. Okay. I get it, but. I'm not just gonna sell another man my right. clothes, yeah, especially like, in like, the club. Especially in a club, yeah, like, yeah. Walk it's home. It might have been winter at the time. Like I, I don't know, man. And that was just sort of rubbed me the wrong way. I was just like, it's just a weird, you know. It's it's one thing to say, hey, old man, like Puff really likes that jacket. Where did you get it? Right. You know, right. so he could go. It's not like he can't afford it. Mm -hmm. Right. I would have told him where I got it, but he wanted to buy my actual jacket. That's ill. So I'm like, nah, I can't good. relate. I'm I'm good, man. I'm good. <laughs> so I'm just gonna say neither. Okay, Green Latin or DJ Who Kid? Green Latin, because me and Green have a have a relationship. And, you know, we we did we did an epic project together. Right. DJ Who Kid, I know, but I just know him. You right. know what I mean? Right. Beyonce or Alicia Keys? <laughs> I think Beyonce. Okay. Beyonce. I mean, you know, Alicia Keys is dope. Okay. But I, you know, and I and I remember the first time I saw them, I saw them perform together. Wow. Yeah. First time you see Beyonce and Alicia, Alicia Keys. Keys. Well, it was an Alicia Keys concert, and oh. Beyonce came through and did a little guest guest On Alicia story. Keys set. Yeah. Holy moly guacamole, describe this. Yeah, yeah. And then watching it, and then like Beyonce got off the stage, because we were backstage, kind of, well, not backstage, but side stage, and she walked out, and she was next to me. And I'm like, damn, that's Beyonce. Wow. <laughs> like, right here, arms wow. link. Like, you know, Beyonce definitely has the energy yeah. that's... The, Mega star, the Virgo, and so forth. And Alicia Keys is dope. Shout out to Swizz. You yes. know, me, me and him have always had a good relationship. Um, mm -hmm. You know, but I, I would say Beyonce, to be honest. Yes, that's, Alicia Keys, my sister too, and Swizz, my brother. UGK or Outkast? This, no, nah, I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna take a shot for this one. Uh, UGK, really? UGK, and, and I think Outkast is dope, but but UGK, like. One of my early mixtapes that I did, it was like a Dirty South mixtape, and, and it was like UGK all through it, like Pocket Full of Stones. Mm. Me and Bun B have a dope relationship. In fact, I'm going to tell you this. You had a chill burger? I have not. I'm, I'm, I'm planning on it. Well, I haven't been down to Texas in a while. Uh, all right. It's not like they have them in LA. <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah, avoiding yeah. it or not. Like, yeah, 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 you got to have you know, a chill burger. They're yeah, very no, addictive. They're, they're, Even they're, the vegan version is Well, fucking. they're in Texas, and I haven't been yeah, to Texas yeah. in whatever, 15 okay. years. Um, but I'm going to tell you this. The first time I met Pimp C, my man, uh, Tony Martin, was managing him. And he said, yo, 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 we in the studio, Pimp C, you want to come down? I said, cool, let's, let's go, yeah, Pimp C. And you so, produced at the time? No, 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 I was a DJ. <laughs> yeah. I, I was a mixtape DJ. Yeah, I'm trying to step in fact, up. I just did a, a UGK mixtape at the time. Okay, You know, the, dedication the, like how you did well, with No, 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 a label actually gave me some tracks and, okay. and had me put together oh. a UGK mixtape and so okay. forth. Exclusive. Yeah, with exclusives on it and stuff okay. like that. Um, so I go down to the studio, and, and Pimp C is there, and I have never seen someone that's just so much energy, and it's like story to story, and the, each story gets crazier and crazier and crazier and crazier. And I remember he told me there's this one story. I'm not going to name names because we all know these people. No problem. And uh, I, I remember... He was like, yeah, and I was at the bar, and this very famous R&B singer <coughs> was, was at the bar. And he's like, yeah, she was looking at me up and down, and she's like, who this motherfucker think he is, E-40 or something? <laughs> and I said, bitch, if you don't know who I am, you must be living under a rock, and I threw a bag of money in her face. Damn. And we all know who this is, but I'm not, I'll tell you afterwards. Okay. <laughs> but it's like this caliber of story. Right. And then the next story is even crazier. Right. And then two weeks later, he died. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be honest. Um, Pimp C was like, not from this world. Well, mm. he was special. 
Yeah, he was special. He, he, he was special. And, and Bun B is dope. Right. But, but really, like... And he'll even tell you, like, yeah, he'll M- say that. Yeah. MC is what really made UGK, mm. like, 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 you know, because he would sing all the hooks and everything else right. like that. You know, what I mean, Bun right. B is dope, yeah, dope rapper, super but, dope. But you know, when it came to the hooks and everything, as well as the verses, right. MC was the one was the glue that held it all together. And uh, yeah, man, I, I, getting the honor to, to hang out with Pimp C for right. just a short period of time was was important. I tell you. Um, a story of Pimp C real fast. I had a, a group and um, they wanted to do a song with UGK. UGK asked me for a certain amount of money. <laughs> I went and I got it. You know the story? Yeah. And and I gave it to them and Pimp C gave me back my money. He was like, I just wanted to see if you was going to come play, boy. <laughs> and I was just like, what? It <clears throat> like, was the first time ever. Like, he gave me back the check. He was like, I just wanted to see if you was going to come on time. I wanted to see if you was going to, like, I wanted to see, do New York people respect us the huh. same way? And I was just like, oh, <clears throat> shit. Same thing with 3-6 Mafia. I did a record mm-hmm. with um, well, um, well, Project Pat. Project Pat wasn't known at the time. Mm-hmm. I did a record for Project Pat. And and 3-6 Mafia had the hottest, tear the club up. And I had a record with 3-6 Mafia just because of that. So how important is relationships for you? No, 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 no. We're not done. We gotta be ain't done. I'm sorry. I'm reminding me to say how important relationships is. Drama or Khaled? Ooh, DJ drama or DJ yeah, Khaled. Yeah, DJ drama. We address them both with DJ <laughs> in front of their names, sir. Drama. Woo. Any explanation why? I don't have a relationship with Khaled at all. Really? Yeah, at all. Like zero. And you also went at him about the Palestine shit. Well, but that that, that doesn't have anything to do with... Okay. That it's not that I'm, you know, mad at him or I somehow try to reach out. We just don't, you know. We, I have interviewed him in my DVD days and so okay. forth, but yeah, we just don't. We don't have any level of relationship. But if you was to go to the store right now to pick up one album, DJ we're talking Khaled about albums. We're talking about my opinion of. of okay, the yeah, your opinion. Yeah, opinion. yeah, but my, my opinion. Okay. You know, me, me and Drama do have a relationship. Okay. You know, me and Drama were like we're in the same freshman class. In fact, like, there's this famous uh, Vibe cover where they got all the, not the cover, but it was on the inside of Vibe, where they had um, this kind of DJ issue where they had, like, the Legends, and then they had, like, the Next Generation, and me and, and Drama were part of that Next Generation photo wow. shoot. So we're in the same freshman class, and I think that me and him, if you look at that picture, me and him became the most successful dudes wow. from that freshman class. Wow. So, so I think, you know, I've always going to have respect for him because we came up together. Because, you know, rap, I had a rap phenomenon, at right. the time, and then he was Gangster Grill yeah. at the time, and we both kind of chose different paths, and you know, he became a, you know more of a producer, <laughs> label, and so forth. I became a media outlet, but you know both of us became. I think both of us exceeded our expectations. So yeah, Fire. feared or love? Loved. I'm not. I'm not trying to be feared. Me too. Yeah, I don't. I don't want anyone to be scared of me on any level because I'm not a scary person. Yeah, I respect. I, I don't. I don't. I don't need. I don't need anyone. To, to have that type of feeling towards me on, on any level, I'd rather be loved or or not cared about. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But not I don't I don't choose fear over uh, on any level. So um, EFN's favorite argument, was that? your guess, Tony Yayo, <laughs> the, the, the frequency, Ice Cube or Biggie? I mean, I would say Ice Cube because that ties into my whole NWA thing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Biggie came later. Um, and, you know, Biggie's dope. And I love both albums. But but Ice Cube... Ice Cube is just Ice Cube, man. I think that was like the soul of N.W.A. Mm. Uh, after Ice Cube left N.W.A., you know, the 4 Life album was cool, but it wasn't like straight out of Compton. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And, and uh, America's Most Wanted, I like better than both of Biggie's albums. And mm. Death Certificate... Yeah, I mean, a lot of people say Death Certificate, but for me, it's America's Most no, Wanted. Both of them, to me, are... Yeah, America's Most Wanted, and, you know, I talked to Chuck D about this because the Bomb Squad produced that. I thought it was just an absolute perfect piece yeah. of work. Just absolutely, like, like, Ice Cube melded with the, the East Coast Bomb Squad beats was, was just such a perfect union. And I think people just don't appreciate how great that album is because that next album was more of a West Coast right. album. Right, right. You know what I mean? I think people more leaned into that. 
East Coast people weren't really bumping West Coast music like that. And, you know, I mean, to a certain extent, but but yeah, I, I would say Ice Cube. And um, and Kill That Will, that EP is... Amazing. You know, Kill That Will was another great one for me, because that came yeah. right after that. That was yeah. between America's Most Wanted Death yep. Certificate. And it was really almost like a Death Certificate 1.5. Right, right, right. In a way. But yeah, no, I, Ice Cube is brilliant, man. And, and Ice Cube's flow is incredible. Uh, and unfortunately, I've never gotten to interview him. You, you know will. What I'm saying? Maybe one day. You know what I mean? I, I, but I, I have so much love and respect for, for, the, for Ice Cube's do. craft. I mean, because I've interviewed DJ Yella, DOC, Arabian Prince. Wow. Those are the NWA members. Yeah. So I've never done Dre. I've never done Q. <laughs> and of course, Easy passed away. Wow. Uh, but, but yeah, Ice Cube, I almost feels like the last piece that I would like to get one day before, you know, before it's all said and done. Scarface or Ice T? I'll say Scarface. Uh, and Ice T is dope. And, uh, you know, Power was was incredible. And, um, you know, but, but but Scarface, like like that first that first Ghetto Boys album with the mug shots, you know, Mr. Mr. Scarface was walking down the block. Like, it's like, yo, what the fuck is this? Right. <laughs> and then, and then, like, that solo album where everyone's pulling out the guns and the key of coke on the table it's like the level of creativity with this shit is just like through the fucking roof you know and, and I think ultimately you know Ice-T I think he got into his bag with the acting thing right. you know I mean I think once he did New Jack City which I recently saw again it's like yo dude, Ice is dope like you know on the acting side of things and I think he realized that there's way more money in it but I think Scarface that's like a rapper's rapper you know and, and this is why I think his Teddy Desk concert Oh, yeah. Got the reaction that it did because you just forget how dope of a storyteller. And, you know, and people, people always like what I don't like is everyone says Scarface and they forget about Willie D. Right. Because Willie D, this is my friend who I, I talked to last night. Like, he played such a huge role. Like, you know, you know, I start off our interviews like, it's time to step on some motherfucking toes right. and fuck them hoes. <laughs> East Coast ain't playing our song. Want to hear what the hell going on? Mm -hmm. Like, like he was so aggressive, and and once you get to know him, you realize that he's really like that. Right. Like this is not an act. No, he's, yeah, no, like, like he never has. Really, he yeah. really will beat you up in yeah. person. Right. You know, what you I mean? like he'll yeah. really put hands yeah. on. Yeah. You. Yeah. Like 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 this, like that persona that you saw. Plus, he was writing for for um, uh, Bushwick Bill. Right. Most of Bushwick's raps was was Scarface. It was, it, was, Scarface. it was Willie D's pen. Okay. Yeah. Willie D. Yeah, Willie D. wrote wrote a lot of that. Most of it, actually. You know. So yeah, man. Willie D. And yeah, Willie D. And shout out to Ice Ice T. You know, I I interviewed Ice T um, at your movie set. That's right. Remember in the barbershop? That's right. That's right. That's right. You was in my movie. Yeah. I, never I came out. It. I still got. It. I still got. It. Never came out. I got. I got. I got my third grade lunch money. Too. Right. Well, I, I remember <laughs> they were filming, and I'm like. <laughs> Y'all don't want to put a mic a little closer to me. <laughs> You're like, where that bar is right yeah, now. Yeah, we know like, the fuck we're doing. <laughs> but don't worry about it. We got great footage. It's still, it's still going to be you. Yeah. Uh, Melly Mel or Cass? Melly Mel. Melly Mel. Um, and I got to interview Mel. And, um, and we talked about how if it wasn't for the message, hip-hop may have faded away. Ooh. Because... Up until that point, in, in his words, it was rappers talk about rapping. Mm. The message was the first serious hip hop song. The first one with the social message, the ones that the critics, the New York Times and, and you know, the, the, the Time magazines were like, oh, OK, this is there's something here. Right. Mm. Like there, there's actual reality rap. They were called reality rap. Right. Like, like, the, like the, 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 this is actually painting a picture of life in this particular region. And it was, you know, such a dope song and such a dope beat. And um, the way it was all put together, one of my early 12-inch singles, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I had that on 12-inch. Um, and, and it was like, it was such a monumental thing. And it sucks that, that Mel doesn't get mentioned with the greats because he, he is one of the greats. For sure. The voice, the presence, the structure, before there was anything to base it off of. Right. Was was Melly Mel, right. and and people always, and I think just because it's 
Grandmaster Flash in the Furious Five, his name is not in there. You sometimes forget, and you put all the focus on Flash, right. which, you know, Flash is a legend, but, yes. but Mel was the vocalist of that group. Everyone else was just right. backup vocal. He was the lead, right. A hundred percent. And he, like I said, like, <clears throat> people would always assume that hip-hop would just, would have blown up no matter what, but no, like, life doesn't work that way. There, there, there's crossroads that if certain things don't happen, and I like to compare it to Go-Go. Mm. In D.C., Go-Go is the biggest thing ever. And outside of D.C., nobody knows anything about Go-Go. It's huge in one region. It's a regional music. And hip-hop could have stayed that way if it wasn't for these records that broke through that mm. barrier, like the message. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And, and you, as a real hip-hop head, like, you can't deny what I'm saying right now. Right, no, for sure. It was, it was those records, because up until that point, it was... You know, Busy B and you right. know, it transcended you know, region. Jump in my limousine right. with a hundred dollar bill and you know right. what I mean? Right. Go play basketball. Like like it, it was you know, I mean it was fun, it was right. party, it was right. cool. Like, you know, it, but but it wasn't the message raised the bar. It showed the potential. It showed it the go. potential right. of what it could be and what it is today. Right. So and, and I've I've interviewed you know, Kaz. I understand. I understand the importance of Kaz. Like, when, when I make these choices, don't think it's because I don't know who No, Kaz is immensely is. important, yeah. No, he, he's very important. You know, I mean, in fact, the first hit record in hip-hop, which was what? Oh, it's Rapper's Delight. Rapper's Delight. He's taking his birth. Was his. Right. You know? That's all. I'm the C-A-S-A and right. O-V-A and the rest is F-L-Y. Like, no, your name is Big Bang Hank. Like, right, why right. are you saying you're Casanova Fly? Because he literally, word for word, he took, took the Kaz's rock. lyrics wow. and re-wrapped right. them, and it became a hit song, and no one knows about publishing or writing credits. Yeah. These right, are just kids right. recording for cassette right. debts. Right. So I understand the importance of Kaz. But once again, rappers talking about rapping. Of that, you know, mm -hmm. flying, money, limousines, basketball, pools, TV screens. Like, Mel, Mel is Mel. Yeah. Let's make some noise for Melly Mel. Yeah. <laughs> Tony Yayo or Lord Jamal? Tony Yayo. Anything you want to elaborate? Nope. <laughs> 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 Shout out to Tony Ayo, man. That's my man. And um, we, we, we formed, we, we've really formed a, a good relationship. And, and, um, and this is something we've, that he said, because you got to understand that for a good 10 years, Tony was very quiet. Now, I don't remember Tony being For 10 quiet. years, you did not, Tony was 50s man, and he was 100% was solid and, and did whatever 50. You know what I mean? Has his friend required him to do when he played his position. He, Tony's a definition of loyalty, but Tony was not out there doing interviews, putting his face out, giving his opinion out right. until we did the first Vlad TV interview. And now Tony is like a media sensation. Yeah, yeah he is. He did Dream Champs. That's <laughs> yes, right. After, after that, he yes. did. Yes. Am I right? Am I right? But, but, but I got to defend Yayo because maybe he wasn't Quiet on the media scene, but he he's no. I, I know behind the scenes yeah, behind who Tony scene. Ayo is. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is, is that the way that his visibility of where yeah. he is now, kind of in the same way that you found your second career, he's yes. finding his second career. Yes, yes. And now he's doing more tours and doing mm. more features and, and everything mm. else like that. And this is these are his words. And I, I feel it. I feel that me bringing him on, and you got to you got to remember that first interview was tense. Right. You know I I know Tony's reputation. Just, what did, what did you he say to I mean? you? And he said to you, he was like he was like Lloyd Banks don't like you or something like that. He doesn't. Yeah. Why does why, why doesn't Lloyd Banks like you? Dumb shit. I mean like it, the annoying part about this is that the first time anyone has said Vlad TV on a video was Lloyd Banks and Tony Yayo. No fucking way. 2008, I go to G-Unit offices to interview the both of them, and they, I do an interview with both of them, and they, I ask them for a shout out. I'm like, yo, it's Lloyd, talking to New York. Oh, this is, you know, Lloyd Banks. You know, check out Vlad, you know, you tune into VladTV.com. Like, this is Lloyd Banks and Tony Yayo. I used to go to G-Unit, interview both of them. I know both of them, everything else like that. Um, so, so, this is so dumb. Like, 
Tony, like, like Banks doesn't really do a lot of interviews. Okay. Right? So, you know, we, we continue to cover him on, on the news site, anything else like that. I DM'd him a few times. Hey, do you want to do an interview? He would just never answer. Right. right? And then, you know, if you know Vlad TV, every day we do flashbacks. Okay. Right? So if something's happening, like, I don't know, Nicki Minaj is beefing with Megan Thee Stallion. So we'll bring up an old Nicki Minaj interview where she's talking about other female rappers from, from that time. It's a huh. flashback, whatever else, right? And it's, it's always labeled flashback. Right. Right, in parentheses. But it makes it look like you're, uh, what do they call it, trolling? Not really trolling. It's uh-huh. just bringing in, you know, it's, listen, like, your catalog is important. Mm. Your intellectual property and your ability to monetize it and use it again and continue. Repurpose it, to right. Repurpose it is important. Right. This is, the film companies have always known this. Right. Yeah. But, but us smaller guys are just learning this now. So if I have a 16 year catalog and there's a video from 10 years ago that I could put up that gets another half million views, right. that I don't right. have to do any editing, I don't have to you just, don't, you just throw it yeah. back up there, throw the words flashback on it, which happens all the time now. You know, we literally every month, millions of views comes from just flashbacks. I'm gonna use that. So in this particular case, uh, we put up a Lloyd Banks flashback, and the writer forgot to put flashback in it. Oh, so right? it made it seem like it was it made it seem like it was new. Right. Whatever, honest mistake. So he he writes me kind of like like a like a nasty DM, and I'm like, this is when you so this is when you choose to respond to me. Like well, get, after all these ignored DMs, you choose to respond to me now. Mm-hmm. That was it. That was the exchange. We we never talked again. And then like, I oh yeah yeah uh, Lloyd Banks hates you because of that from fucking seven years ago or some shit. Like, you know what I mean? It's Yeo telling you, Lloyd. Yeo telling me this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know, and I'm like, all right, well, fuck it then. Who cares? Right. You know what I mean? Like, he mad at you. Okay, he mad at me. Like, who cares? Life goes on. You know? It is what it is. Do you think you you, you dealt unfair, fair, uh, unfair cards because... Because I'm white? <laughs> all right, let's say that. You, you think, think that's that? the only reason? What else? You tell me. Okay. Some of my closest friends, some of my neighbors, they're white. (laughs) And sometimes they ask me inappropriate questions. Yeah. It's just a part of their character. They'll be like, all right, for instance, this white guy lives right next to me. And we're all outside doing yoga. And he goes, well, I wasn't doing yoga. But he goes, this is, this is exactly how he described it. He said, hey, don't go over there. You're going to get high. Because, you know, we smoke weed before we work out. Okay. But I don't like the terminology getting high. I get medicated. My <laughs> shit is actually, I actually buy my shit from a dispensary. I actually have a receipt. Right. I don't look at it as getting high at all. So I was so offended. Offended. I went upstairs. I got my receipt. I got my medical marijuana card. I got my regular. And I wanted to show him. Right. Listen, you're you're in the 90s talking about getting high. I get medicated. No disrespect. So you think that is that sometimes like sometimes it's a question that maybe I right. I'm yeah. not racially sensitive. Is that is that what you're saying? Sometimes I, I ask questions that are racially insensitive. No, I'm asking. Do you think that? Uh, I think being white, you're you're not gonna relate completely to someone who's black. I respect. Just, that. Let's just let's just be honest. I respect that. And you're not gonna relate to someone completely who's white. Right. That, that's just the reality. Now, during the course of my adult life, from you know my 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 sophomore year in college to you know throughout my whole adult life, ninety five percent of my long term relationships have been with black women. Mm. So, you know, in my home, I, I'm being told, you know, what I mean, on an intimate level, mm. when I'm doing that and I try to correct myself, especially because I'm speaking publicly. Right. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. even with that, mm-hmm. 
of course, I'm not going to relate to what it is to be a black person. Right. Because when I walk down the street, unless they know I'm DJ Vlad, I, I'm, a, I'm a white guy. Right. You know, I, even though I'm Jewish, you right. can't necessarily tell I'm Jewish unless you know what to look for. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I'm, you know, so I don't know what it's like to be a black person and live in America. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I remember when it really dawned on me right. was when I went to Africa for the first time. Mm. When I, when I went to Africa, I went to Senegal, you know, where, where Akon is Akon from. Akon is from. You know, but this was before. They I have remember. Dior out there? <clears throat> they have what? It's Dior. <laughs> Dior. Oh. Like the Dior you wore? <laughs> you wore the, on your show? Drio, Drio, my bad. Drio, my bad, yeah, my, bad. my bad, my bad, my bad. Yeah, um, man, man. I, I remember I'm, I, I lived with a family in Senegal, because the people I was with were had, wow. had friends, so it wasn't. I was, I was in a hotel. I was actually living with the Senegalese family for like two weeks, and I was wow. walking around in Dakar in the village, the small village we were at, and everything else like that. And I would interact with the Senegalese, and, and I just remember how, how different our interactions would be than with black people in America mm. when I would see them when I don't know them. Like a level of apprehension that was in America was not there in Africa, and it started to dawn on me that like, like, like oh, meaning this, they didn't they didn't look at you the same. Yeah, it it was a level of, yo, this is our shit. We here, we comfortable. I, we're not tripping off you. We're right. not worried. That you're not a threat. Right. You're not. I don't look down on you. I don't look up at you. You just are what you are because yo, this is our country and you're a guest. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You're a guest in our country, and we're friendly. We're happy you be here, but this is our shit, and, you know, this is our shit. Mm. The president's black. <laughs> the whole government's black. The postman right. is black. The wow. milkman is black. You, you wow. just, you're the outsider here, you know, right. but you're welcome, everything else like that. You, you start to realize that in America, but, but they, they, there's not the history of slavery and the, you know, the Jim Crow laws yeah. and, and the, the white only bathrooms and, and, and the bullshit and everything else like that in that country, you realize, oh, okay, a lot of the a lot of the the tension that happens because of the history in America. And you have to go somewhere else to realize it because right. you're just in it twenty four seven. You live next to a waterfall, you don't hear the waterfall, you're next to the waterfall. Mm. You go away from the waterfall, you realize, oh, it's not so loud over here for the first time wow. ever in life. And that's that's what I realized. It was like, okay, now I, that's why it's so important for people to travel. Out of the country for sure. and see and see other shit because America is not, yes, best country on earth, whatever. It's not the only country on earth. Right. You have to see other places and see the similarities and the differences because there's all, there, there is differences. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it just made me realize, okay, like, you know, I remember like, like Richard Pryor talking about the first time he went to Africa, like, right. like he never used the N word after yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, like yeah. it, it changes you seeing yeah. shit like that. Yeah. It, it changes you on, on different levels depending on who you are, man. So, like I said, of course I'm going to be racially insensitive to right. certain things. You know right. what I mean? And I think to a certain degree, people tune in for that because I do have a lar large, white, you know, white fan base right. of hip-hop kids right. who are thinking the same things that I'm thinking. And they're relating to me as a white kid who loves hip-hop talking to someone who isn't white. Right. about these very serious topics, something that they, they'll never get to do. They'll right. just watch it on the internet. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, so it, it is what it is. So yeah, I'm absolutely guilty of it, and, and, and I try to work on it on a daily basis. I, I'll tell you this. Diego right there. This is, my, this is my friend. When we go out jogging, he jumps in front of cars. Because he loses his white privilege to the fullest. <laughs> By the way, I enjoy it. <laughs> I enjoy it. He jumps right in front of the car. They start. Aah! They ain't hitting no white person. It's just a fact. It's just a fact. And Diego walks over there. He don't give a fuck. He's swinging his arms. He'll jump in front of any car. He doesn't care. Only time I disagree with him is a child who was uh, a uh, hat came off and he was going to run. So like, fuck that child. Fuck that hat, too. Mm. He's about to die. He thought he was going to run in front of the fucking highway right. to get a hat. Mm. And the, the, the parents didn't even move. So we said, Diego, you going to move your ass. But we were in Amsterdam. And I look at, I was smoking cigarettes at the time. And I look. They're only watching me. 
I'm supposed to be the privileged person. You know, fuck that. I am the privileged person, I guess, right? Diego, you there? So I'm like, yo, I'm going to go outside and smoke a cigarette. I smoke cigarettes at the time. I'm going outside and smoke a cigarette. Every single time I walk through the door, they stop me and say, you can't bring your drink out. Hmm. My friend right there. I just went like this. Gave it to him, and he walked right out the front door. Yeah. Huh? Oh, he had his. <laughs> he was double fisted. <laughs> and then we go outside, and I'm just looking at the security, you bitch ass motherfucker. <laughs> Drinking, I'm double fisting too. Like, ah, smoking a cigarette. And then I, I, I did it 12 times. Like, but did they stop me every 12 times? They said, you can't drink. And I was just like, all right, cool. I got good white people that was with me. <laughs> and I would just, but that's, that's fucking. And you know where we was at? Where was that? I said where was that? Amsterdam. Amsterdam. Yeah. And one of, one of the most liberous free countries to smoke marijuana. Yeah. I've been there multiple times. Okay. Yeah. So it, it does exist. Racism is everywhere, bro. Of course it is. Yes. Yeah. You can't pretend like it doesn't. Right. And, and you can't um, deny the effects of that history because there's, you know, I have interviewed Bill Duke who had grandparents that were coming out of slavery. Like, wow. you know, like really, I, I believe, was he alive when the Emmett Till news broke? I think it did. I think he was. Yeah, yeah. He, he remembers the Emmett Till story. You know, so so you got people alive right now <clears throat> that dealt with that shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is not ancient. This is not Jesus' time. That's the crazy people part. People just yeah. arguing over some shit that nobody technically knows about. No, this is some real shit, man. And yeah. um, can't just pretend it doesn't exist. You gotta, you gotta accept it. You gotta accept your role in it. You know, you're not gonna be a perfect person. You know, you're gonna fuck up. You know that you need good people around you that are gonna check you on it. Be like, hey, right. man, what you said here was was fucked up. And some of my guests do that. Right. You know, the Airy Spears of the world will right. sit there and check me on camera. Michael Jai White will check me on camera. And I'll run it. Right, yeah. You know, I'll let, yo, yeah, I fucked up. My bad. Yeah. Yeah, it's only one last question. This is, this is the one last question we say isn't a trick question. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. I got, we said Boosie. Oh, okay. Boosie or Aaron Hall? This before. Boosie. Okay. Yeah. Pussy. <laughs> All right. Then now this is one last question that we say it's not a trick. Okay. Loyalty or respect? Respect. R respect. I mean, a, a person, a person will be loyal to you to an extent. You can't, you can't expect. You you, you get what you earn. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. You 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 get. You can't expect a person to be loyal to you when you're disrespectful to that person. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You can't expect loyalty to last mm. past past like a, a a level of comprehension that that no one really could understand. Mm. You know, like like I, I have a staff of people, and I understand they're going to be loyal to me as long as I pay them. Right. But at the point that I can't pay them anymore, I don't expect them to keep working for me for free. Right. You know right. what I mean? And I don't expect that and they understand <laughs> that I'm not going to keep paying them if they stop working. Right. You know, and, and you do have friendships and you do have principles and everything else like that. But we're all humans, mm -hmm. you know, but 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 the respect, that's an ongoing thing. It's an active thing. It's happening right now. Like, like me and you are respecting each other right, right. now. Right. Right. Me being here. Right. You know, sure. because of the respect I have for you and us having that conversation Thank and you, you. allowing me to come on this platform Thank with all the wars that you won and everything right. else like that. This, this is respect that you're seeing in action. Right. It's not about loyalty. Right. You know what I mean? Okay. The, the loyalty is right. whatever. You know what I mean? Right. Right. And, and we have been loyal to each other and everything else like that. But, but, but the respect is something you have to keep working on. Right. It's not just something that you, you know. And, and you know, listen, I've, I've interviewed... So many people, so many mafia guys right. that that went through the the pricking of the finger and gave and and told 
that they're mafia boss, that if my, my kids are dying and you call me, I will drop them and yeah. go see you. Cosa and Nostra. Cosa Nostra. And, and they've killed people because they were told what to do. And they've killed their own family members. You know, Sammy the Bull killed his brother-in-law. Yeah. Killed his brother-in-law because he was told to do that shit. Because he took the oath. Right. And at some point, that loyalty expired. And all of them that I've interviewed have said, and I was gonna, I was gonna do a hundred years, and I was gonna jump out the window. But then this happened. And, but then I heard this tape of him saying this. Oh, then they threatened my family. There's always a good excuse to be disloyal. There's always a great excuse to be disloyal. That's yes. Ill. Am I right? You disagree with me? That's, no, no, that's ill. That's ill. I'm saying that's a Ill. person will always find an excuse to be disloyal to you. Wow. We'll always find an excuse. And you may not agree with that excuse. And you, yo, uh, man, I just interviewed Trick Daddy today, right? This interview's not out yet. This interview's not out. But, but this story, my, my man Jake, he, he knows what he, he was sitting right there. Like, like this, you gotta understand Trick Daddy was in tears when he was telling me this story, right? <clears throat> so Trick Daddy's a multi-platinum artist at this point. All his big records, he's like album number five, number two on Billboard, Take It to the House. Let's go is out. He's touring, whatever else, right? And he said, like, when he got his first million dollars, he said, he told Ted Lucas, don't give me that money. Break it up in $20,000, $30,000 chunks so all the people that are there for me, I'm going to give them this. I'm going to break them all off. I'm going to give this person this money, this, uh, this person. You know, take care of everyone who, who took care of me when I was homeless and, you know, in the street and everything else like that. You know what I mean? Huh. And, and, he, and he went back to Liberty City to go hang out on this basketball court, and he sees one of his, one of his friends that he paid off back then but, but felt that he didn't do enough. And he trick said... felt that he didn't do enough? Or the, the, the person dude, felt... The person felt that, that, that the trick, the, the trick do didn't do enough for him. Yeah. He said, man, you're not allowed on this fucking court yeah. anymore. I know this is, you think this is your city, whatever. You, you can't come back here again. I'm still here. You can't come to this fucking court anymore. Uh. Trick was so hurt when he heard that. And, 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 and he's holding back tears as he's telling me the story. You don't know where interviews are going to go, right? Uh, you know, you, I'm asking course. a question and, then, and, then, and, and, and I'm getting this reaction. He said, he said I, I, I went in my car and I got my pistol. And I, I, I pulled my pistol out of that motherfucker and I said, your daddy got killed from someone that came back and killed him. Your brother got killed because someone that came back and killed him. Motherfucker, I'm coming back and I'm going to kill you for telling me I can't come here after everything I've done for you. And I'm going to call your grandmother and tell her what the fuck I just did. And, and he's holding back tears telling me this story. And that motherfucker pressed charges on him and sued him. And he said, I did so much for this motherfucker. I, 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 you know what I mean? I did so much and I, I, I hooked him up with my sister. He probably could have killed him at that moment and he did. He did it, luckily. Right. But he, he, there was repercussions to that action. But that, that, that's how upset he was. And you would think that a motherfucker would be loyal to you after you've done so much for him and he hasn't done something for you. But he'll, he'll find a reason to let you know that you're not welcome and spit in your face. So, so I don't, I don't want to hear about that loyalty shit. That that was disrespectful. It's about respect, because that's an ongoing process that we keep building with each other. I can't, I can't expect you to be loyal to me for something I did yesterday if I continue to be disrespectful to you today and tomorrow. Damn. So yeah, that, that's an easy answer for me. I ain't gonna lie, you ain't supposed to take a shot, but I gotta take a shot for your ass. <laughs> that was mad deep. Shit. Holy shit. I'm gonna take a pee piece. Oh, damn. I gotta take a pee piece too. We in sync. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Hurry up. Hold on. Come on, let's go. Uh -huh. Underdog uh -huh. Fantasy! Uh -huh. Now we, we're doing something different. We're changing it up with the hockey La Familia. Yes, we are. Uh -huh. We're gonna start off straight with the hockey league. What we did is took all the first place teams against who they're playing against. And we're going to go down like this. So the first game is Vancouver Canucks. They are the first plays out of Pacific Division. They are playing Anaheim Ducks. Vancouver Canucks against the Anaheim Ducks. Higher or lower, who's winning? Well, this is very easy. Uh, it's very <laughs> How familiar are you with hockey? <laughs> very. Okay, continue. 
Okay. So it's Vancouver. No, we can't smoke. Higher, lower. I'm if I'm not smoking, like come on. <laughs> I take Vancouver to score at least four goals in that game. Higher. No. If and four goals in hockey is equivalent to... No, 35 like, zero. Are you tired of me? No, it's not. <laughs> no, exactly. I, like, I like how you think what you're wrong. <laughs> it is. Look, look. Hey, guys. This I'm is going. documented. I'm going 100% Vancouver. Clearly, before us, I love going to Vancouver. Any other uh, places um, in Canada, when I enter the country, they pull me over. Vancouver do not. <laughs> Vancouver does not. They let me go through. I don't know if it's because they like criminals. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but Vancouver's always had my back, so I'm going over. One of the beautifulest places I've ever seen on earth. Some, it's it's even summertime, spot. they have the summertime on the, on the low, but up top, they have winter. You can walk to winter. You can go to the winter. It is real. I love Skin. it. I've never even heard of that. Skin, yes, yes. And it was one of my number one markets for years. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to um, um go Vancouver. We go Vancouver. Good job. Official Don Diego, what are you going for? I'm going to say Anaheim. Anaheim? Yeah, what the puck is a Canuck? Ah, what the puck is a Canuck? Right. Going with. I'm going Canada, Canada, Canada when it comes to hockey, go. man. Canada. Anaheim, one I think of the I'm going to side with uh, Diego. Yep. We're going with Anaheim this time. Anaheim. Hey, shout out to Anaheim. I lived there for a small Still time. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. One of right, the worst Coast, teams huh? in the league. We appreciate you. Now we're going to go right into the NBA games. Dale. For tonight, don't forget Drink Chance Army. Tonight's games. Tonight, go on the app right now. Into, Download uh, the app. Get your 100 bucks. Underdog Utah Fantasy. Jazz with the Miami Heat. Miami Heat. Total points higher or lower, and who you think is going to win? Total points higher because the Jazz don't like to play defense. The mm. Heat do. It's going to be somewhere in the middle. I like it Living to go guy. higher being Miami's at home. I've been yeah, picked the Heat. You yeah. know, but go Heat. It makes sense. The Drink Chance Army, don't forget, Underdog Fantasy app. Download it right now. Get in tonight's games. Use, use promo code use drink promo champs code. drink or champs. There's champs. already people hitting me on Twitter. Yep. On um, I'm about to call it X, but it's it's, it's, it's it is it is Twitter. It is Twitter. It's the same. It, it is formerly known as Twitter. Uh, uh, Facebook. Uh, what's the other shit? Um, at Mark Zuckerberg. Um, what, uh, on your social media, they hitting you up. All my social media people are hitting me, telling me how much I'm making the money. That's awesome. That's just, that's what it's about. That's and cool. I'm having fun because I'm having fun with these picks. That's and right. You know, the fact that we can make a couple of people some money, a couple yeah. of extra dollars, you know, during these times, it's, it's, it's dope. And we're on point. Let's go. And we're on point. On the dog. <laughs> Quick time of slime. We did everything. What is going on with you and Joe Biden? Why? Wow. Why y'all can't get along? Well, he can't get along with me. I'm I'm fine with him. Yeah. Yeah. We can't do like a a a, a panel together. We can't do a panel together. And I mean, he said he told academics he's willing to do an interview with me on academics platform. But my thing is that there's so much baggage between him is that we we have to have a conversation. Like okay. I was gonna go on Drink Champ stop talking to you first. Okay. You know okay. what I'm saying? Wait, like, wait. But the, the, and, and we don't have a a one percent. Thing compared to what me and Joe had. Okay, but what happened? Like, cause all right. So how so, the fuck? Did okay, you... so so what, what what happened was this. Okay, <sighs> this story. So I did an interview. Joe Joe lived down the street from me when I lived in Jersey. Yeah, I was Jersey uh, boys. Yeah, two thousand eight. I'm watching Flat TV. Hit him up. Want to do? You know, hey, you want to do an interview? Cool. Show up to where he lives. Do an interview. Puts it out. Whatever. Life goes on. You it's know, the hairy days. Hmm? Is this the hairy days? When he was days? dating to Harry? Yes. Mr. Harry did. Yes, okay. absolutely. 100%. Okay, I'm sorry. 100%. Right. And, and you'll, you'll see why. Okay. So I do the interview with Joe. Interview comes out. So life goes on. You know, we're, we're doing interviews. We're doing interviews. And, you know, Joe was kind of like the early put his life out on mm-hmm. the internet, him and right. Tahiri. He was blogging and stuff. Well, he was right. a vlogger. There we go. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. Yeah. He was one of the early hip-hop vloggers, yep. so he's putting out his stuff, blah, blah, blah. And I'm, and I'm following his stuff. Right? I'm following his YouTube channel, whatever. And I go and watch a video, and he's dissing this rapper named Ransom. Right? He was like, oh, yeah, Ransom is like a Honda, and I'm a Lamborghini, or something, something, something. He's dissing. And I'm like, I didn't know who Ransom was. I looked him up. I'm like, oh, I was a dope rapper out of Jersey. You know, so we reached out to Ransom. It was like, hey, you know, we've seen... Okay, let me stop you right there. I gotta be this guy today. Okay. 
You have a relationship with Joe. I did an interview with Joe. That doesn't make you a did relationship. An, One interview. That's true. One interview. But most of us, like, I got to be devil's advocate. Okay. Once I do an interview for you, I kind of feel like I have a relationship with you. To a certain extent. So do you think that Joe automatically thought that, damn, how the hell I just did an interview with him and now he going to interview my enemy? You think that's... It, it, could that be where it started? I'm asking. Sure. Okay. Absolutely. And I take responsibility for that. Okay. I I, I understand that. Mm. You also got to understand that um, in today's climate, you just go on Instagram and you make a response video and then everyone picks it up and then boom. This let, before, let, let me represent for you. Let me represent my, for you. This is before YouTube. No, I mean, it's before Instagram, before even Twitter. <laughs> right. Twitter wasn't but even But let out. me represent for you. Yeah. There's been times I've done black interviews and I, was, I regretted what I said. I uh -huh. called you. Yeah. And you honored me. Yes, sir. So, okay, continue. I just want, I just want to be clear of that. Yeah. There's been times, plenty of times I called you and I said, ah, you know what? I might have not been in the right frame of mind. Right, I remember we did the interview in your hotel room. Yep, yep. And you called me up yep. and you had me cut out like 90% of it. Yeah. <laughs> My bad. Right? <laughs> My bad. I think the Kevin Gates part was the only part that you you okay to leaving and then that's Ke only thing. Kevin came Gates? Out. Yeah. I like Kevin Gates. Exactly. No, no, no. The part about his cousin. Like, it was oh, just, him fucking his cousin? Yeah. It oh, yeah, was that's sort cool. of a funny moment. I said, yeah. hey, can I keep this yo, one? You're not thinking fine. I keep this yo, one. In. But well, everything I, else I took out. Okay. Yeah. Right? You asked <laughs> me to take it. And, and you know something? This is like a professional courtesy in the business because mm. I do interviews on other platforms and call them up and say, hey, can you take this part out? Like, I did Breakfast Club. Exactly. There's one part where I felt like if I respond to this guy, it's going to turn into a big fucking thing. So please right. take it out. They took it out. Right. Life goes on. You right. know what I'm saying? And usually before it comes out, that's the time to ask, not to right. put it out. And uh, I right. do that for you. People do it for me. Right. Whatever. Right? I expect that. So Joe talks about Ransom. And we hit up Ransom and say, hey, do you want to respond? Right. Ransom's like, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah, I want to respond. So I send one of my camera people to go interview Ransom. Ransom responds. And then he raises it up a notch. Ransom. He starts, yeah, Ransom starts talking about how fabulous... Was, was messing with Tahiri, mm. which I guess is the truth because they used to date before Joe, whatever else. Joe went ballistic after seeing this interview and decided to get a crew together and then take it from a war of words to actually a physical situation. And he goes, and goes on Ransom's block and some sort of altercation happens. But why do you have anything to do with that? Because I, well, and I'll explain to you. Okay. I'll, I'll explain to you, right? An altercation happens with Ransom. I guess like a gunshot was involved and stuff like that. It was serious. But you don't really know any of this yet until Joe puts out his response video bragging about what just happened wow. and threatening Ransom that if he says anything, he's going to put out the video of the altercation. Mm. So we, we put that up. I mean, we, we put that on the site and, you know, we're, we're covering the back and forth. So, you know, because VladTV.com is a news site. So then we get a call from Ransom. <coughs> and he was like, yo, I got a video I want to give you that I want y'all to post. Ransom mistakenly on Math Hoffa said that I was filming it or something. I wasn't even there. I, was, uh, I wasn't there for either of the filmings. Wait, so on Ransom said that on Math Hoffa? On Math Hoffa was like, oh, Vlad was, my expert Vlad, opinion. Vlad was not there when we interviewed him about the uh, Joe situation. Vlad was definitely not there when he handed me this video that he mm. shot by himself. Mm. And when we watched the video, it's Ransom and his, his crew walking up to one of Joe Bunn's people. Not Joe. Not Joe. One of Joe Bunn's people confronting him about what had just happened and Ransom's man slapping Joe Bunn's dude mm. in the video. Mm. And we put that out. Mm. And then Joe Button basically makes a video in response is like, fine, Ransom, you win, Vlad, you win, y'all are stupider than me, you know, y'all are fucking ridiculous, nah, fuck this, I ain't doing this dumb shit anymore, whatever, whatever. And then Ransom ends up going to jail over, not, over some shit. Not over that, over something else. Well, over the situation that happened and the video that he wanted to put out, I think, ultimately was, was involved in that. The video that he gave oh, me wow. to put out. The video that he provided for me. So this is the reason why people think you, you're working with the police. That's the reason why, right there. Which is? Yeah, because that, you know, and shit like that. 
This well, the, the, the video is him is one of his man slapping right. somebody. He didn't go to jail but for slapping. the fact that you posted it, that's right. probably... But he asked me to post it. But you don't have to post yeah, it. Of course I don't. But he asked You know me there's to repercussions post it. to those videos. He asked me to post it. And it's, a, it's a slapping video. I didn't even know about any of the gunshot shit or whatever yeah. else. It's a slapping video. Like, yeah. what is that, a misdemeanor? Right. If that... Right. Mm -hmm. Seriously. Mm -hmm. But it could snowball. It's like, I, I guess yeah. that's what people will say that. Well, like, right. would you do that today? Would I do that today? Would you Would you continue a back and forth knowing that it could spiral out of control? No. You see, but, but, but this is but this is but this is me at fifty. Right. You know, we were. You know, but I also. This is you at what? But, I'm fifty. On fifty. No, this no, is you're me saying at as 50 a fifty years old. Oh yeah, now okay. Not okay, okay, at okay, thirty. Okay. Yeah, 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 exactly. Which was exactly. my age back as a thirty-four year old. Exactly. You know, what I mean, but the, but you you also realize that. Okay, I'm gonna pass on it, but someone else is gonna put it out. Right. You know, what I mean, so me not putting it out really makes no difference at this point. Right. But that's right. but that's also the, well, the, the right. drug dealer excuse. But, but, you know, but, but, like but, I, no, I'm I understand, but there's lots of stuff I don't put out there. Right. Right. There, right. There's lots of stuff that crosses my desk, <laughs> and I'll actually call the person up. Right. And I'll say, listen, I just got this video, or I just got this paperwork, mm -hmm. and it's about you, and it's legitimate, and I'm not gonna put it out, right. but I'm letting you know that it's out there. Right. Yeah, somebody else might. Yeah, pick someone it up. else might. Right. And I'm going to give you an early warning on this. Right. But I don't need to be the guy at the edge of all the drama anymore. Like, but you know, but this was a very different hungry Vlad right. back then. Right. You know, what I mean, and this was very early in the internet, and and this was very. Right. It's normal now. It wasn't normal right. back then. Right. And because of that chain of events, and you know, and it just turned into a fuck you from both ends for the next however many years. It'd be fuck Vlad, and it'd be like fuck Joe. Right. And he would say some shit, and I was, and he would do an interview, and I'd be brought up, and I'd do an interview about him, and he'd be brought up. And it just right. went back and forth, went back and forth, you know? And But but in my eyes, him and Ransom are cool now. Yeah. And that's who we really got into it with. <laughs> that's who really the altercation happened. I'm just covering it. Mm -hmm. Him and Ransom are cool. He's still mad at me. I'm always like, I'm not tripping. Like, if Joe wants to get on the phone with me, Later today, I'll have a conversation with him. Right. And I'll take responsibility for the mistakes that I made. Right. I don't know if he will, but mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? And, and you know what I mean? Will we, can we do business at one point? Of course we can. But that's really more on him. But we can't just think about it when me and you had our tension. I'm not just right. going to come do drink champs right. not knowing what I'm walking into. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Could be an ambush. Like who, who no, the no, fuck no, knows? Like, no, you know no, what I mean? no, no, no ambush at drinks. No, but I'm saying, like, you don't yeah, you yes. don't know. If like, your past is a past, your past is a past. Nah, but, 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 but what I'm saying is like, yeah, so so that that's really the me and Joe story. And and neither one of us are scared of another, each other. Right. We all have money, we all have security, we all have guns, like we all we, we all men. Mm -hmm. We all have gotten to this point by standing up on our on our you know principles and ideals. We both have big fan bases. Like, you know, it is what it is. But that, that's that's me and Joe in a nutshell. But I've always said, like, it's not that serious. I've been in way more serious shit mm -hmm. than, than what me and Joe have gone through. Like, that shit is light as far as I'm concerned. So if he ever wants to have a conversation with me, but, you know, he just had Dr. Umar Johnson on. And when my name, when Umar brought up my name, he's like, fuck Vlad. You know, so clearly wait, he's still wait. mad. Umar said fuck Vlad? Well, no, Umar brought my name up <laughs> when talking about Umar some other say? shit. What's that? What did Umar say? Oh, well, Umar just was like, I'm out here building schools. DJ Vlad ain't building schools. <laughs> DJ Vlad is also not taking money <laughs> for the schools that have, haven't been launched yet. But that's another story. But when he said that, yeah. Joe was like, fuck Vlad. Oh, fuck. But whatever, it's fuck Vlad. Like, what is, yeah, it's just words. Like, you know what I mean? But, but it's that, you know, but it's like, all right, fuck Joe too. You right, know, right, and, right. And, and, this is, and this is how we keep rocking. And this may be past our lifetimes. Who knows? But I, I'm not tripping. Right. I'm really, I'm really have no animosity towards him at all. Right. I, I am happy for his success. He's really carved out a lane. Um, I feel that he is also like one of the few popular podcasts that, do well without external guests. Right. right. The yeah. rest of us really right. revolves around the yeah. quality of our guests. Right. He's able to pull it together with his own crew of people. Right. And sometimes he has guests, sometimes he doesn't. But you know what I mean? So he has to, you have to give him props for that. And he helped pioneer the space. Yeah. For everybody. Yeah. yeah. At least in hip hop. Yeah. For sure. Absolutely, man. And he deserves all, all the money and the accolades that, 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 that he's been getting. I've never hated on Joe and his business uh, on any level. But you know, it's, Fuck me, fuck you too. That's basically. Do we what take it. a shot? Sure. All right, let's.
Salo, Salo, Salo. Oh, shit. That's the Mama Wana now? Mama Wana's coming out? Salo, Salo. I heard Elliot Wilson say recently. Yeah. He was like, journalism and being media used to be corny. Used to be like, people used to like, stab you for having an opinion. And now everybody wants to be media. Have you ever saw this day coming? I mean, I'm not surprised. Meaning? M- meaning that. Well, I mean, let's let's just let's just keep it 100. Keep it 100. Like, like there's just a lot more money in it now, and people have realized that. Yeah. Right. So so you could you could paint it how you want to paint it, right. but there's just a lot more money in it. And social and, media and has emboldened everybody to think. Yeah. They're and, ready and, for and it. it's easier to build up a following. Right. And and you know what I'm saying, and especially if you're already a celebrity and have, like. Kiki Palmer has a fucking podcast. Pharrell. Pharrell has a podcast. Like, who could Pharrell not get? Right. Like, I'm supposed to, like, I compete with Pharrell. Right. Do you know how hard that is? It's not fair. It's, it's not, not fair. fucking fair. It's he's not the, fucking fair. Not only is he Pharrell, the mega producer, but now he's the head of fucking Louis Vuitton. Louis Vuitton. Man, like, who's going to tell him no? You know what I mean? Yeah, I got his no, number. You might get some some exclusive Louis sneakers at some point for yeah, saying yes. I, I ain't going to lie. It took me so long. I had a whole Louis outfit and I was like damn fuck if I wear this I'm gonna fuck up and I said you know what I'm meeting with Fat Joe Fat Joe bought me this sweater he bought me this sweater like who, who was there three hours ago. no not three hours ago you asshole <laughs> like six months ago I couldn't fit it so I had to have a um, meeting with Fat Joe not a meeting and I was like, I gotta wear this. And I was like, it was it just worked perfect. But I, but I'm I'm proud of Pharrell. Taking over Louis for fucking yeah. Tom. And he did super thug. Hey man. What, 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 what? Hey man. Like, Damn. Yeah. The, 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 that, that was the record I was playing when I moved to New York. Homeboy. Wow. I came to party. Oh, God Good damn. girl was looking at me. That God that damn. beat? God that damn. beat? God damn. One of the greatest beats of hip hop. Yes. God right? damn. I'm supposed to compete with this motherfucker when it comes to guests. He got, he got fucking scissor on his show. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm supposed not, to compete with that. I'm supposed to compete with that. DJ Vlad. I'm not going to lie. Um, how do you feel about Zane Lowe? Um, I don't... I haven't watched any of his interviews. You know, I, I mean, listen... I don't you work, think nobody watches his interviews. You work for Apple, you're going to get Apple. Like, you know what I mean? You're going to get people... One of the big platforms, like working for Spotify. You're going to get... You're going to get special treatment and special right. favors and everything else like that. I haven't watched enough of his stuff to say it's good or bad. I'm not just going to... It's not like I'm hating or jealous of it, you know? I'm not hating or no, jealous no, of it. No, no, no. He has his role, but, you know, he doesn't own his own content and everything else like that. He, he, he has his own role in what he does, and, you know, he gets a lot of big guests and everything else like that. But I don't, I don't know. It's, it's Him and I do differently. But, but to answer your question, there's just a lot more money in it right now. Yes. Um. And when you're already a celebrity, it's much easier. And, and, you know, when people come to me and say, hey, I want to start a podcast, what do you think I should do? I always tell them the same thing. All the big podcasts, when you look at the, the landscape, they're only big because of the guests that they can get consistently. Yes. Yeah. Right? Mm. Kodak Black, Kanye. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like... Uh, the level of guests that right. you guys have gotten, right. Nas, right. like you know, I remember back when you were, you yeah. and I were talking. Yeah. I congratulate yeah. you for that. Like, yeah. like the, you are where you are, yes, because <clears throat> of Nori and EFN. I, I right. get it, right. but you take away all those big guests, and it's drink champs is a very different drink champs. Right, you, sure. you know what I'm saying? For sure. It's just we're just keeping it 100. You take right. Vlad's guests away, and if it's right. just me, like it's a very different Vlad TV. You take away Boosie, you take away Yale, you, right. you take, take away, you know, the Mike Tyson's of the world, like whatever, like, you know, so you're already a celebrity. You already have relationships. Right. But it's the story you tell. Okay. Yeah, no, but, well, you know, and yeah, I mean, listen, there, there is a skill set, but, you know, yes. you, you, you get the right guests and you figure out how to do this. Mm. You know, it's not like Shannon Sharp had to do a whole lot with Cat Williams. Right, right. Cat Williams let go. Right? Shannon Sharp. Cat Williams Shannon came Sharp. with his Uzi yeah. loaded. Loaded. Like, like loaded. Kind of, yeah. And he had an extra clip in yes. his two ears. Yes. He was. Right. He had the shit in yeah. the socks. 
Shannon. You know what I mean? Yes, yes. You're like, where did he pull out that? We're not that? taking nothing from Shannon Sharp. We're not. But yeah. Shannon essentially just had to press the record button and sit back. If Shannon like, did not talk during that whole interview it would have been and just let Cat be Cat, it would be just as impactful. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes, very true. But my, my only pushback to that is that it's consistency too because yeah. those are anomalies when you have those big you know episodes or whatever right. guests because when we started Drink Champs not even CBS who distributed us believed in it really that much they were like let's see do some demos and we did a couple episodes and and it just it took off because I think at that time we caught lightning in a bottle it was it was also the environment that we were getting people that people kind of had forgotten about a little bit yeah and we're bringing back these stories and rehashing this stuff. Yeah. And I think that that's a big component for a lot of podcasts, finding your own lane, yeah. being consistent. And yeah, of course, if you get big guests on a certain consistent basis. Uh, big guests, the consistency and everything else like that. And um, now... Lie, you want another shot? I just, got, I just poured another shot. I got one. I'm good. Sorry, man. Solid one. Solid one. This is so great. Can you... You know, but... Now, now the space is, is a lot more crowded. Yeah. Ever since COVID, because that's what everybody, yeah, yeah. every COVID, celebrity that was born. Started, everyone started a podcast. Now, yeah. now you have actors, athletes, everybody. You know, wives of CEOs. Um, you, you know, everything. Rock Bitches stars, got rap stars, got everything. Got yeah, got a podcast. Yeah, everything. No every, everyone got podcasts, yeah. and yo, you know, it, it's you know. It was much easier to get interviews in 2008 when I launched Vlad TV than it right. is now. Right. You know, um, I mean, it's easier to a certain degree because we have the relationships and we have the track record and we have budgets and everything else like that. But, you know, listen, the, the, I mean, I'm competing against Pharrell. Right. I, I am. Like, when I see a Pharrell interview, it's like, I, I got to outdo that. You really feel you're competing with him? I don't Absolutely. see that. I, don't I, see I, I know what he means. No, yeah. I know what he means, but I just don't see the comparison to compete. No, but the last he's, 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 he's one main percent correct. I, I am, yeah. there is a pair of eyeballs that I want to go to my channel as opposed to his. All right, let me, let me just you say, I feel I mean, those same eyeballs something. will go to yours as, just as something. much. Not necessarily. And, 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 and Not necessarily. EF, I'm just saying they could. I'm saying there's they no good. Friend, you want to we only have a, what's, what's the most ever. important thing you got is time, and time is limited. Right. You yeah. see what I'm saying? So so you could say that, but a person only has a certain amount of time EF to friend, watch you got to remember, you're one of the most loyalist people ever. When we had Kendrick Lamar at Rock the Bells, or we, we didn't have Kendrick Lamar. No, we never had him. Saying, oh, that he was supposed um, to come he's through. Supposed right, to right, right. The label set that up. I tweeted that shit. Right. Once I tweeted it, I tweeted, Yo, you got questions for uh, 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 Kendrick Lamar? And then... All it was rolling sudden, loud that he was coming to Miami. Rolling loud. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, people called us and was like, this interview's not happening no longer, but the room. And then Zane Lowe have it. And let me just say something, because I'm not going at Zane Lowe at all. I'm never like, Actually, this Zane Low. This the politics that come along with Zane Low. It's not him. Using him as an example. I love Larry Jackson. I love everybody, but they didn't understand what was going on. I did because that interview was gone very fast. That's why I don't announce shit until it's already done. Unless right. it's a regular guest that I know that no one could throw right, a monkey yeah, wrench yeah, in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I'll say, hey, what do y'all want to want me? You know, like like I have like a community section, like a, like, a, like a paid member section of Vlad TV. So I'll go to the members and be like, hey, what should I ask Boosie my next interview? Right. Because I know that no one could stop an interview between me and Boosie. Right. It's just impossible. Right. You know, but if I had a Kendrick interview in the bag... I, I, I wouldn't tell myself about yeah, it. That's my <laughs> you know, that's my learning. Lesson. And, and, and it was me who tweeted. And to just yeah. in defense and to explain that situation, it was the label setting it up, and then he yes. he, got, he got in late, and he was headlining Rolling Loud, and he had yes. to get straight to the stage. Yes, very true. So we yeah. were we were cutting it close with that one. Yeah, but you still can make shit happen. No, if for you sure. Want to make shit for happen. sure. Right. Yeah. But now when, when the thing is, you don't know how the communication is with his team, and when the label's setting it up, you know that. I mean, we haven't had a TDE interview since. Like 2010. Well, it was the Interscope that was actually the. So you know, and me and Top know each other. So, right. You know, he called me last year. Like you know, we weren't neighbors. I think actually. So it is what it is, man. It it is, it is what it is. Are, are you satisfied with what hip hop ha has presented to you, or it, it surpassed my expectation? 
It's past. It's, a, it's your past. Of course, man. Like, yeah. like, I started later. Like, I moved, like, I became, I was doing hip-hop full-time when I was about 28, 29. I wasn't mm. like you mm. that, that started as a teen. Yes, that just grew up into it and all, always had been part of it and, and grew up in a section surrounded by rappers. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like, you grew up around the Nas's and the Mob Deeps and there you, I, that came later to me in life and then I just thought it would be a hobby, you know? And, and to, <coughs> to realize one day, like, I'm actually part of this. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm legitimately part of this. Yes. Hip hop fans are fans of DJ Vlad, of Vlad Lebuckle. Oh, 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 no, of Vladislav Lubovny, the name I was born with. Right. A kid from U Ukraine that didn't speak English when he was born. That now I'm actually a real, that, that's worth, worth more than me than any check or any, yeah, you know, right. award or trophy or car or house or, piece of clothing it's like I, I'm actually part of the hip hop story in my own way I'm not a rapper I'm not a producer right I'm, I don't sign artists but I do what I do and I, I do it at the highest level right and I have millions of people tune in every day right to hear what the fuck I got to say in this genre that I love that I've devoted a large chunk of my life to really at this point yeah there yet yeah. From about 20, yeah, I'm almost half my life to at this point. Right. Like, I didn't think this was realistically going to happen. Right. Did I, was I watching your MTV rap say, yeah, I'm going to be the next Ed Lover? <laughs> Did I read Double XL saying, and, and, and the source and say, yeah, one day I'm going to have a media outlet that's bigger than both of these motherfucking media wow. outlets, which today is true. Wow. Right? Vlad TV is, you combine Double XL and the source and you don't have, a Vlad TV daily impact on, mm -hmm. on any level. It, it is what it is. You know, shout out to the freshman issue and that's where it ends for Double X. Right. Um, you know, so so it's like the fact that I know that I'm part of this legitimately. And yeah, you're going to have your detractors. That's fine. Everyone does. You know, N not everyone is a Jay-Z fan. Not everyone is a Nas fan. Not everyone's a Biggie and a Pac fan. But right. to know that I'm legitimately part of it has so exceeded my expectations because I didn't think this was realistically ever possible when I was listening to the first Easy Key album. You, you came from a different mind state because early on, it was clear that you were going to be part of this. You know, how old when the CNN album came out? 19... But how old were you? How old were you? I was 17. That's what I'm... You were a teenager. Yeah. My junior year in high school, you going to tell me that I'm going to be part of hip-hop <laughs> San Mateo, California, white... Kid uh, named Vlad Lebovny, fuck out of here! Come on, like I, it's a joke. Like, so, so, a, so, what do you want? What would you want your legacy to be known as in in hip hop? Um, ultimately, to take my ego out of it because my ego is gonna go away when I go away. But when you look at the Vlad TV catalog. The type of interviews that we do are life story pieces. That's fine. Right? That, that's what I do. When I met up with Trick Daddy today, we started at birth in Liberty City. Good. And we talked about his mom who had 11 kids by 10 different men. Yep. And... <coughs> I thought it was his pops, his moms. His mom had 11 kids by she 10 different men. And then his and dad pops. had about 10 kids as well. So there's, you know, whatever. There you go. Three, you know... Two dozen, you know, kids, you know, like, and, and we, we take it piece by piece through this, through, through these set of events leading up to his, how he first started rapping, you know what I mean? The trials and tribulations and all the albums and all the big songs to where we are right now. My collection of life pieces on important people of this era is probably the biggest collection mm. in the hip hop space. Mm. And the hip-hop space includes people like John Witherspoon, who did his only life story piece with me. Wow. You know, um, it includes people that passed away that never got to tell their life story outside of Vlad TV. Mm. We have that collection, that catalog, that unless someone manages to destroy it somehow, 
will be around for thousands of years. Way, way past my family will be able to benefit from this. But, but you know, that's cool. But when people write report, like when you, you know, like you watch a movie like Boomerang and you're like, yo, the Mushroom Belt guy, like this guy's, and you watch Friday, yo, Pops, like, yo, who is this guy? There's only one place to find out who he really is. Mm. Yes, there's pieces, there's interviews that you could piece together and somehow mush it together. But to hear about how he became who he is, right. we're the only ones that actually bothered to, to do the research and put our resources into that. And um, that's what I want the legacy to be, to leave behind these stories for people later on that were important to me and were important to millions of other people and made an impact and were exceptional people, whether they're actors whether athletes like Evander, you know, like like a Pete Rose who I just interviewed, who will never make in the Hall of Fame because of the gambling, but he's has more hits than any other person probably ever for the rest of baseball. To to the you know the great producers like you know Rodney Jerkins or Teddy Riley, um, to the great singers like Shaka Khan or Smokey Robinson, to to people's first interviews like um, the Migos. You know what I'm saying? Like they're, first they're, Migos interview. Yeah, it was was with me. Get the fuck. Out. Yeah, in, in Atlanta. First ever. First Migos. ever. First ever. Who called you? QC. No, I was in Atlanta, and Coach K was like, I was trying to get a, uh, a Gucci interview, a, a Gucci Man interview, and he Gucci was man. Gucci was being Gucci managed. clone or regular Gucci. Regular Gucci. Okay. Before he got cloned. Okay. And Coach K was was was, was like managing him, and I was like, Yo, how can I get a Gucci interview? Oh, I got you. I got you, but. Can you first interview this new group <laughs> that, that you know we're pushing right now you called got the Migos? No information, and you a research-driven person. I just had to make it work, and, and so Offset, Offset. Well, you know, I just asked a few kind of general questions, got a little information from generic. him, and you know, it was relatively generic. Mm -hmm. Offset was locked up at the time, so it was really just Quavo um, and Takeoff. You know what I'm saying? But but that was their first ever ever interview. What the fuck? Uh, you know, so so these the, these pieces that you know. Could be upscaled through AI, and you know, you create 4K versions of it, even though they're they're low quality. Right. You know, you know, which we've been doing with some of our older catalog pieces. Like, like these are these are important pieces, man. The Keefe D interview is an important piece. Yeah, that's an important piece because Keefe only told his story completely for the first time ever on Vlad TV, right. and you saw what happened right. with, with all that. That's that's the real legacy that I want to leave behind. And I, I think that's an important thing. And, and, you know, I mean, and yes, yes, I do. Me and Boosie, we rock out. We talk about current events and everything else like that. And, and that gets 10, 15, 20 million views sometimes. And that's dope. Right. But, but the underlying, you know, that's almost the engine that kind of drives the underlying purpose. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm. You always got to do different stuff to, to mm. get what it is that you really want to accomplish. And it's a good way to accomplish it. Lucy's my man. These are fun interviews. Right. You know, but like, yo, like these stories um, that a lot of times are being told for the first time ever. Not everyone's going to get a documentary about them. But a lot of people have Vlad TV pieces of them telling their own story. Right. When is Vlad TV documentary coming out? I don't know. Worldstar asked me if I want to do one. I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm good. You're saying Worldstar offered <laughs> do a documentary on me. Do a document. That's kind of fine. Yeah, yeah, but it was, you know, it wasn't any sort of real, you know, there wasn't a budget or anything. You know what I mean? Like, if I do it, I mean, I you feel like. You your own budget. You, you own. Yeah, no, I mean, listen. You own your own material, uh, correct? Right, yeah, I own everything. Yes. I mean, look, if, if someone, you know, it's not like, I mean, if, if a, a director that I really admired, like if Hype Williams wanted to do a Vlad TV documentary, yeah, let's let's rock out, and do it. You know what I mean? Because Brett I'm so, Ratner. I'm sorry. Brett Ratner. Yeah, Brett Ratner. Yeah. Like you know, someone who I admire, <coughs> you know, visually in terms Paul of how Hunter. they put pieces. What's that? Paul Hunter. Who's that? You don't know. I, I I know the name, but remind me who he is. Yeah, that 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 was like another director. Yeah, director of hip hop. Did, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Fab Five Freddy. If you want to do oh. something with me, yeah, I got you know. And I, I know I Fab. Like I've interviewed Fab. Like you know, what I mean, like someone like that. If they wanted to come do some shit, you know, what I mean, I, I'm sure World Star meant well. But you know, what I mean, but I, what I'm saying is, yeah, if they want to come do some shit, and and you know, I think there's more. I don't. I don't think I've reached my peak yet. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean, I, I feel I have to reach more of a peak in order to to think about something like that. I still have years left. Because when we look at your website, right, 
It's similar to Netflix. The only difference is you don't give us the number one, two, three interview or whatever, whatever. Yeah. But Nef- but you give us the numbers. Netflix does not. Right. Do you think that's a mistake? Well, I mean, the website is the website. That's always been a secondary part of the business. The YouTube channel is the YouTube channel. And right. you can that's see the numbers on it. Yeah, right. absolutely. Okay. That, that, that's like 90% of the business. So, you, all, right, all right. So, explain that. What, what happens to you if, if YouTube changes in the way you can monetize? Do you have a, a, a plan for that? Well, I'll put it like this. Number one, there's always going to be a place to put great content. Right. You create dope content, and there will always be a, a way for people to find it and you to put it somewhere, whether you find it. Now, whether you it's YouTube or Snapchat that we use these days or with Facebook, that's a constant fucking nightmare for us, or if it's Netflix or Amazon or something else like that, there, there will always be a place, and you know it may not be the way we do interviews, do 10 clips a day, it may just be one powerful piece a year. Right. You know, but you also don't know what the future holds. Right. You, you would like to say that, but you also don't know where there might be a day that let's just say YouTube totally, let's just say YouTube shuts down. You know, YouTube shuts down. There's no other place for independent content like mine. I've, I've lived my life financially pretty conservatively mm. I've invested you know I've always pushed the whole stock investment stuff like that you know what I mean I, I own my house outright mm. um, I don't buy shit I can't afford mm. um, I could always if I need to cut shit off and, and, and live you know I, I, I could I could technically live out the rest of my days right. with what I've accumulated right now yeah. And I mean, I'd have to tone down my lifestyle. I wouldn't mm-hmm. get, go shopping as much as I do now, but whatever, who cares, shopping. Like, I, I, I could live out my, the rest of my life comfortably based on how I've lived my life up to this point. I've never lived on the edge because I've lost it all at one point. Right, exceeded. You know what I mean? Like, I've, I've, when I moved to New York, I was homeless because I've fucked off all my money before. So I, I knew, you know, it, when you lose it all, that's the best, teacher ever of how not to lose it all because the back of your mind you always remember how you lost it all right. Right. and it's possible you always remember it. it's always possible right. so hey man if it all ends it was a great fucking run right. we you know what our YouTube channel is like 3 billion views all together that's like the whole country of China like mm. you know what I mean like I, I, I have I walk around, I get love. People want to take photos with me. They tell me how much, you know, they'll, they'll talk about certain interviews that, that connected with them. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I've, I've, helped, I've helped people out. I, I've, I've put people on. You know, I, I think really, like, I, I remember Birdman, you know, the first time we spoke, he was like, you, you're the first one that really kind of mixed business with interviews. Interviews have always been kind of a free thing in, in the media world and you started paying some of your guests and it turn in, you've turned into real businesses and I, I've, you know what I mean? Like, Lunell, you know, talked about, you know, recently because she put this out publicly. I never said anything, but Lunell, publicly. Comedian. The comedian she's, was she's like, awesome, she, 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 she publicly said like how I was one of the few people when, when the pandemic hit and she was fucked up because she couldn't tour. I was one of the few people that helped her out financially to make sure mm-hmm. she was okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I've put, I've easily put millions of dollars in people's pockets. You know, for just, you know, like the Tony Yeos of the world found new careers of just doing interviews. Right. You know what I mean? Like actually supporting part of their lifestyle through just meeting up and talking, talking shit with people. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, man, I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. It's, it's been a 16-year a run at this point. Like, God damn, make some noise for that. <laughs> If, if, if it all if it all ends after drink champs, like yeah. it, it was a hell of a fucking run, man. But, it was, but, I've done a lot. I've done more than I ever thought I would do. Let's talk about Dame Dash. Okay, here we go. It felt like you guys had a relationship. Yes. It felt like, and then it just went all downhill. All downhill. I can't understand. I I swear to God, like you say, you do research. <clears throat> I've literally tried to understand where this started at. Sure. I cannot find it. 
I mean, maybe because you guys are two honorable guys, and I don't know. You tell me. You tell me where this went wrong. So, let me just start off with this. All of us admired Dame Dash. All of us. Yeah. What he pulled off as one third of Rockefeller, and the epic heights of this. And Dame, I know you're gonna watch this, so. You know, listen to what I'm saying right now. Everyone loved Dame and what he represented, his bravado and his, the way he approached things and everything else like that. We all loved it. So when I had a chance to interview Dame, I was excited. And I did an interview with Dame. It went well. He was in L.A. Hey, can you come down and do an interview on my platform? He had like this rental house in Malibu. Cool. Went down, did an interview. Cool. So you went to him, his house? Went to his house. Okay. Then I invited him to my personal house in Calabasas at the time. He came over. He chopped it up. He invited me to his house. So this is two interviews or this three? No, these aren't, these aren't interviews anymore. This We're just hanging out. Together. There was two interviews, and then he comes to hang out and just hang out and talk. Cool. Smoke at my house. A We're building a relationship. Right. You know, then I go, I go to his house, <coughs> and we're talking— And he was like, yeah, I want you to be president of, of my company. I'll give you 20% or so. I'm like, I'm good, Dame. I'm, I got my own shit. You know? And, and Dame at that time is like kind of like sort of sneak dissing. He's like saying my sneakers are fake and, you know, kind of like little, little sideways shit. And, you know, I, I'm running a sneaker site. Like, mm. come on. Like, I'm not wearing fake sneakers. He just doesn't know sneakers. You know, I mean, he just mm -hmm. didn't know what he was talking about in that case. But he's, you know, he's, he's making little snide comments about my content, stuff like that. Cool, whatever. Um, he was like, I was like, yo, uh, why don't we, and me and you actually did this at one point. I'm like, hey, when you, some of the content you're creating, why don't you um, um Let us run it on our channel, and we'll split the profits with you. I mean, you did that for a short time, okay. I remember, at one point. You know, because we already have the, the followers, whatever. You know I mean? We have the deal with Complex, and he was like, well, now, nah, why would I do that? Why don't you just set me, you know, get, introduce me to Complex so I can get a deal over there? <clears throat> right, cool. Introduce him to the president of Complex. You know what I'm saying? So, at the time? Mm -mm. Mm. Nah, nah. It was, I don't want to say his name. Okay, no problem. Complex. You know, I don't want to put him on blast. Um, so then we, we kind of, you know, the relationship was kind of going, whatever. I asked him, hey, you know, like, like Jay, Jay did something and um, I said, hey, do you want to comment on this? You know, do you want to do an interview to comment on, on this, this thing with Jay? Because we all know that he talks about Jay a lot. It just is what it is to, to this day. He's like, yo, why would I comment on what another man does? Like, all right, cool. Then, like, three days later, he does an interview commenting about Jay. <laughs> you know, and I hit him. I'm like, yo, I same thought... Same exact subject? Ex exact same thing that I said he wanted to do. But whatever. I hit him. I'm like, hey, why would you... Um, I thought you said you didn't want to comment on it. And then it started sort of like a bad exchange. Because what, what he, he felt like you thought that he was obligated to you? Well, he wasn't obligated to me, but it's like, why would you tell me you don't want to talk about it? Just talk about it himself. Yeah. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. Right. You know what I mean? Just... As someone who I'm building a relationship, just explain it to me. Okay. Either you don't want to talk about it, or you say, he could just, no, I just want to talk about it my, on my own platform. All right, cool, no problem. But cool. saying I don't want to talk about it, then you're talking about it. So it was just a weird, weird exchange. And it, it got to the point where it was like the, the exchange started to kind of go bad. Like, you know, now we're, now we're kind of starting to talk shit to each other. And I'm like, all right, cool. This is to each other. To, well, we're texting back and okay, forth, okay. and the conversation's getting a little aggressive on both sides, right? right. But I'm like, all right. Whatever. It is what it is. Dame likes to call everyone Chatty Patty. Or right? Culture Vulture. Or Culture Vulture. Okay. So he started with Chatty Patty with you. No, it wasn't. No, no, no. I'm just saying in general, right? I'm not saying he's calling me a Chatty Patty in the text. Not yet. I'm just saying as a whole, he calls people Chatty Patties. He calls people Culture Vulture. Okay. Right? Yes. Me and him had this private exchange. Dame decides to make a video about our conversation. No, time out. What? Dissing me in the video and, and, and talking shit about me. But this over is a private conversation? What, what, yeah, but he made a video talking about our conversation and our falling out. But, but, I, but I'm the chatty patty. But he's, he's the one that made this whole thing public. Hmm. When 
I felt like it just could have been worked out privately between the two of us. I'm not saying anything publicly about it. Like, this is, mm -hmm. you've been to my house, I've been to your house. Like, why are you suddenly making videos about me when I thought we had a private relationship? You know? And then, on top of that, remember I told her I set them up with Complex? Yes. Dame doesn't understand how video business works. You know, they, he puts these videos out, they're getting whatever, 500 to thousand views he gets a check from complex that's not very big so he starts dissing the president that i introduced him to Excellent. publicly okay and this is the man that i made most of my wealth with all right so at that point i was done i wow. said i'm, I'm done there, there, and you walked no, away yeah and it was like fuck dame after that you know what i mean he's like fuck me fuck you too mm -hmm. you know and and it was it's been the back and forth ever since right you know what i mean once again not that deep but right. not that deep. We don't even work with complex anymore. It's, it's whatever. But uh, like the, the, the reality is, is that what I saw with him character wise just just didn't rub me the right way. You, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, I just was like, this ain't the type of person I could do business with. And that's that. And Dame is someone that I really looked forward to to doing business with and having on my show because his, his personality is, is, he has a dope personality and he says a lot of interesting things. You know what I mean? I think he could really have a real, you know, a real strong fan base and anything like that. But based on our interactions, business-wise, it just didn't work. And when you get to a certain level of business, you work with the people you like to work with. So, so let me ask you, right? Uh, he critiqued me. And he said that I had Leo Cones on here. Yeah, I had Leo Cones also on my show. And I didn't ask Leo Cones about him. I didn't either. I didn't either. Yeah. Why would I? I, I feel like Emilio talked about this afterwards. I'm like, and I asked Leo this. I said, are you the most powerful person in music right now? And of course, he's going to deny it. But he's the the global head of YouTube music, YouTube, which is YouTube music, which is one of the global, the, not the American head, not the North American global, head, right. not the Northern Hemisphere head, right. the global head of YouTube yeah. music, yeah. and YouTube is the biggest music platform on the planet. It's bigger than Spotify. Uses, right. It's bigger than Spotify, TikTok, Amazon, Apple, whatever the fuck else new platform comes on, you put them all together, they're not going to add up to YouTube. And my thing was like, I, you know, when I told you about the life story pieces, I have this very important person. I'm going to talk about Dame Dash dissing him. Like, I'm not going to spend my time asking that. There's more important shit to talk about. Well, you know, like how... He became the first hip hop president of a major label. The first. Before him, it's never been done before. Who? Lior. Yeah. You know that. Yeah. Once Def Jam became, you know, that conglomerate and he was head of that conglomerate, people, people downplays. But you do say you like to push the envelope, so would you afford that same respect to somebody else? Like what you did to Tyson would have been the same thing if you would have asked Lior about Dane. In <coughs> Well, I mean, I had a limited amount of time with Dave. Right. You know what I'm saying? I, I had a very I mean, limited Leor. amount of time. I'm mean, oh, sorry, my bad. Leo. Yeah, I had a very limited time with Lior. You know, if you watch that interview, it's, it's very short. Right. It's not my usual two hour. So, you know. <coughs> sorry. There was, I didn't really get to get into the Rockefeller story. Okay. And, and, and quite honestly, you know, he actually gave Lior props. In that interview, and I was like, "What? What, what was?" Lior it? gave Dame props, or Lior Dame? gave Dame props okay. in that interview. I was like, "What was it like to to help <clears throat> create, you know, under Def Jam these th these mega stars like Rockefeller and you know what I mean and the DMA, you know, Rough Riders and so forth?" And he was like, "Hey, that they would have been superstars regardless. You know, th these guys were ultra talented, and I was just I there. Agree. You know, you know what I'm saying? And, and you know, had I had more time, I would have gotten into it. Maybe I would have touched on it like somewhat, but you know." I was focusing on the important shit in, in that piece. And I just felt like Leo dissing him wasn't that important. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you, I guess, made a similar choice. Yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I know I got shots right here. 
Well, I understand I pick and choose sometimes, man. None of us are perfect. And, and, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Our, our, and our, wrong. Let, let the the, the principles are always going to have a little bit of sliding room, you know what I mean, to a certain degree about certain things, not not everything, you know what I mean? Like there's certain unexcusables, but like, you know, you're going to, in your job, you're going to shift a little bit here and there. That's just life. That's just business. That's just motherfucking life. Yeah. So now let me ask you the million dollar question. I always see you with my son. Why I don't see you with my son no more? Life goes on, man. Life goes on. And, uh, you know, people drift apart. Right. And it just is what it is. I have no animosity towards him. And uh, I haven't seen him in, or talked to him in about three years. And, you know, life goes on, man. Yeah. Sometimes people are in your life for a certain amount of time. If you don't want to talk about it, you don't have to talk about it. Yeah. What was the um, needle on, what is it called? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm just going to skip no, this. The from yeah. the camel's back. I, I'm, I'm, just, I, I'm just going to skip this. But, but I can tell you that, that, um, that, that neither one of us are, are, you know, most of us are happy with the decision. Right. Neither one of us are trying to connect with the other, and, and we're all living our lives. And it's, right. not, a, it's not like a one-way or, you know, mm. anything else like that, man. Uh, it's all good. Yeah. Oh, yes. Hell yeah. What's with the drum set behind the interviews? It's not, um, it's really not an, like a, a significance of it. It's just that the studio that we start using in LA just happened to have a drum set there already. Like so, death so row backwards. And you just feel like you don't want to ever change it? I mean, you know, it's the same studio. Uh -huh. It's the same drum set. But then when we built our studio in New York, it's like, oh, okay, like people know us for the drum set. So we actually create our own drum set uh -huh. in New York. So when you see like the academics interviews or the, you know, I'm trying to think, just the New York, just the New York centric interviews, like the, you know, the 1090 Jake interviews and so forth, the Matt Hoffa interviews, you'll see a different drum set. But that that's our New York studio. What? But you know, but you feel people are just visually they're used to it. So yeah, it's it just you know, that. so you just keep the drum set, man. You know, so it's one of these like happy accidents. Right, right. If it's working, why why change it? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so one of the very first times. By the way, you're my friend. I know you. I, I did 15 million thousand glad interviews. But one of the first times I feel like people like zeroed in on you was like, it's because of AR app. Okay. Why do you feel like people zero in on you for that? Even though you... I mean... When something terrible happens to a person, mm. like they get, what, 30 years in prison? That's what you got? Yeah, it's some, it's some hideous number. Wow. It's, it's a, like a 30 or 40 years. It's, it's a hideous number. Mm. When something catastrophic happens to somebody, people look at everything that's out there and they jump to the conclusions. Oh, okay, well, that was because of this. Mm. You know, like, you know, I interviewed uh, Dion Dawkins yesterday, the, 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 the captain of um, the Buffalo Bills. And uh, we talked about the DeMar Hamlin cardiac arrest that happened last year. Remember, he, the, yeah. he had the cardiac, he, he had a heart attack right there on the field. Yep. Right. <clears throat> Everyone thought he was going to die. What did social media say? It's because he was vaccinated. Right, right. That's all I saw. Vaccinated was trending, number one. Like, who, who the fuck knows if he was vaccinated or not, right? Who, 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 know, who knows this? This is not public information. This man had a one in a billion situation where I heard a doctor explain it. If your heartbeat as it's going up and you get a really strong impact as it's going in a certain direction, you could have a cardiac arrest. And it just, just so happened that out of the, the thousands and thousands and thousands of games with the tens of hundreds, hundreds of thousands of players, this just happened. He had a cardiac arrest. But people would be like, he got vaccinated and that's why he had a heart attack. And he's, look, he's 26 years old and he's healthy. There's no other explanation for this. And this is what we're going to run with. And this is just what, what social media does. This is the nature of the beast. All right. So when you see A.R. Ab get 30 years and you, you see an interview with DJ Vlad where he's talking about his past cr criminal activities, what he used to do. 
you, you start to try to put the pieces together and say, well, obviously, this is why he got the 30 years. You're not reading the transcripts. <laughs> You're not talking to him. You're not talking to his lawyer. You're not watching the news. You're not reading articles about the case. You got this Vlad TV interview with a million views, and you're like, well, this, this, is, the, this is the connection, obviously. Reality is ARAB had a snitch who testified against, who took the stand against everybody mm. about a bunch of shit that had nothing to do with my interview. Mm. He took the stand and testified against every fucking person and put everyone in prison over over some really serious charges. But people are going to jump to conclusions, you know? And then, and then you get fake articles, and then you get this, this unknown media outlet um, who you've never heard of before writes an article that says, Judge thanks DJ Vlad for helping to convict ARAB. And it shows like this white judge who's not the, even the judge on the case. The, the, it's not the New York Times. It's an outlet no one's ever heard of. And suddenly I'm trending. And motherfuckers like Quest Love is like retweeting it and commenting about the shit. And he's got 10 million fucking subscribers. And he doesn't, you know, and then when I tell him the shit is fake and show him talking about it, he blocks me. Like, you know what I'm saying? Instead of taking responsibility for what he just fucking did. And then this just builds. And then people would just jump to their conclusions and this is what you got to hold. Has ARAB ever said that something I did with Vlad has something to do with his situation? No. What does he have to, to lose at this point? He's doing his time. That was my man. Mm. Like, I really like... Swizz Beats called me one day and said, yo, I got this Philly artist named ARAB that I'm fucking with. Can you interview him? Swizz Beats. Swizz Beats called me. A ask him. You know Swizz. Swizz called me out of the blue and said, yo, I got this guy. He's really dope. Can you interview him? I got you, Swizz. Uh. I interviewed him. I, 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 the, the music is dope. Like, you know, I'm, I'm fucking with it. He's talking his shit, you know, and then he gets into his shit with Meek Mill and he comes to Vlad TV to, uh, then he becomes cool with Meek Mill and he comes back to talk about that and rah, 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 like... You know, I'm fucking with him. That's my man. I, I, I respect him. I respect his music. Like, like this is someone I fuck with. Right. And then he gets he gets the 30 years, and then people blame me for it. And, and but why do you think people blame you? <clears throat> because they see interviews about these types of situations. Right. I, I go deep into people's stories. Right. You know, like like the life story includes all the lumps and the warts and the scabs and the scars, you know, and the gunshot wounds, the knife shot wound, knife wounds and all that shit, man. Like it's some real shit that, that we talk about. I will ask the questions that other people won't ask. So, you know, and, and, and we'll we'll talk about that shit. But but this is, you know, but this is shit that I'm careful about, about statutes of limitations and shit right. that you're not actively doing, like I'm not asking what you're doing right now. All right. I, I bought a kilo of cocaine, you know, back in the 90s. I've talked about that shit. It's past the statute of limitations. Yeah, it's, two, it's 2024. Yeah. It's 24 years. You know, like, Longer than that. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Longer than that. It's right. like 27, 28 years. Like, you know what I mean? Listen, I, I know I could talk. I've earned the right to talk about the dude that ripped me off for the kilo of cocaine and I spent the $17,000. I'm, I'm allowed to monetize that and put that out there and let people know that's part of my story. And everyone who sits down is, is allowed to do in the same manner. You know, someone who did their prison time is allowed to, to talk about why they did their prison time. Exactly. They've earned that right with the most valuable thing in their life, which is their time. So let me ask you, uh, um, what was the first time where you got scrutinized because of that? Was it ARAB? Was it like, because I, I watched Adam 22, uh -huh. right? And I'm looking at Adam 22, uh -huh. and they're like, oh, you on some Vlad TV shit. That's what they tell Adam. And I'm sitting back like, God damn. Cat Williams told that to Willie D when they just did the interview. It's like, okay, Vlad. <laughs> he, he, said that, he said that. He said that to Willie, yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. So, because you've been scrutinized with this, like, if if you go to Vlad, you're going to jail. Right. At some point. Or you're telling on yourself. Or you're right. telling on yourself. I mean, apart from the Keefe situation, I've never heard of that actually happening. 
Right. Just yeah. just to keep it 100. Right. Like, I've never heard of our stuff actually being used, an interview being used against someone in a case that they actually talked about. And my and in in my rationale for, for the Keefe D interview was that he wrote a fucking book. Right. Okay, like you, you wrote a book. This is I, I I didn't I didn't find you right. living in Iowa somewhere right. and put you on uh, you know run up on you as you're going to your job and and, and have you blurt out a bunch of no, shit you don't want to solve stuff. the crime. Let's just use some. It, it is what it is. Use some solve the fucking crime. You know, outside the Keefe interview, I've never I've never heard of that happening because right. I've I've always been very careful and I've always you know like. I've never asked a person what type of crimes, anything illegal they're doing right now or within a certain amount of time that it, it can actually come, come back and bite them. I'll, ne- I'll never talk to someone about a, a murder unless, of course, they wrote a book about the murder. Right. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? But, but, but an unsolved murder? Yeah. Do I know murderers? I'm sure I do. I'm sure I do. But not on camera or off camera would I ever ask them about it because there's no statute of limitations behind that. Right. As you could see with Keefe D right. 30 years later. Wow. You, you know, so, so it's, it's just one of those things, man. Um, but, but I was the only one that would ask these type of questions to begin with. Everyone else, like, like Double XL wasn't doing that. Fuck Master Flex wasn't doing that. Sway was not doing that. No. Angie Martinez was not doing that. Big Boy was not doing that. That's my man. That's my neighbor. I love him, right. but he wasn't doing these type of interviews, and, and he knows it. Mm. Um, Ralph McDaniels wasn't doing it. Ed Lover wasn't doing it. Fab Five, Five Freddy wasn't doing it. Big Vaughn wasn't doing it from the Bay. Like I, I, I can go on and on and on and on and on and on and on. I was the one that said, "Yo, I'm going to do these type of interviews, <laughs> and I'm going to do it in the hip hop space." And I'm going to do it in the sports space. I'm going to do it in the crime space. I'm going to do it in the movie space if it's if, if it's applicable. Now, if I'm talking to John B., I can't really ask him about the grimy <coughs> shit he did because he's never really done any grimy shit. He grew up in a middle class background and he started singing. He hooked up with Babyface and, you know, he has yeah. some hit records. The end. Like, I, I can't ask someone about some shit that don't have nothing to do with them. But I was the one that I felt had had the the guts to ask those uncomfortable questions because you don't know what the fuck gonna happen. Person can walk out, person can get angry. You know, you, and that's, and that, that comes with the art of an interview. Like I heard someone say like, yo, Vlad, you don't do shit. All you do is talk to people. Anybody could do that. So, so. It's not true. You take, you go sit down in front of a stranger for two hours and create a exciting piece of content in real time with no do-overs, with no B-roll, with no cut, let's try it again. Like, you do that. I've seen people do that, and 15 minutes later, they don't know what to do. Like, the interview's over, they don't know. Like, like to be able to maneuver, you could ask anyone anything. The most uncomfortable, private question, you could ask them if you know the craft of how to ease into that question. Right. It's, it's a craft. You can't learn it in school. You can't have someone pull you aside and tell you how to do it. It's practice. This is me. Yes. Roughly 18 years of, of doing this for a living, like <coughs> figuring out how to ease into a question and actually getting an answer and getting a, an honest answer and getting a sincere answer and sometimes having the person cry, mm. like, like earlier today with, with Trick Daddy. You know what I'm saying? To have to have a person burst into tears that you you you've hit you've hit them so hard, almost like a therapy session in, in a way. It is. You know what I'm saying? It is. And n- nobody else was doing that. Yeah. And and now you see a lot of people doing that. Yep. Yeah. There's a lot of people that looked at what I was doing and said, "Okay, well, I guess you can. This isn't a taboo subject. Maybe I could do this to a certain degree." I see a lot of people that have you know use bits and pieces of what I do and create a dope shit out of it. And that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to, they're supposed to be like a, a baby drink champ somewhere right. or someone, hey, right. yeah, you know, we're going to get some liquor. Plenty of those. You know, yeah, yeah like, you know, I'm, no, saying, I, I'm not aware of a, yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm sure of it. I'm sure there's baby Vlad's out, Vlad TV's out. No, there's plenty of Vlad. There's plenty of them. And that's cool. That's what we're supposed to do. As long as All right, that's you're not, right. you're not tricking people it's into watching right. the shit, like, 
You know, it's you by stealing. Ever regret putting the numbers up? Like, you know how like Netflix uh-huh. don't put the numbers up? They just show you this is the number one interview yeah. because by you putting the numbers up, somebody thought that they owed you or you owed them. I mean, that's always going to be the case, right? Meaning, Meaning that Like, whether there's money changing hands or not, when you sit down and do something like this, it, it's a business deal. Yes. Right? I understand that I'm going to come here and give you the most valuable thing that I own, my time, mm-hmm. for as long as you want. Thank you. And you could ask me, you know. Yes. There are a few stipulations that we talked about, but yes. in general, you could ask me whatever you want, and you're going to take this, and you go monetize it, right. and you go make money off that, and I understand that. Yeah. And I'm doing it for my own personal reasons. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And whatever our arrangement is, is our arrangement. Maybe I'm getting a million dollars to do this interview. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'm doing it because I want the publicity. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe I'm doing it because of our relationship. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Maybe at one point I might call you and ask to do my platform. Right. There, it, it's a deal mm-hmm. on some sort, yeah. whether spoken or unspoken, yep. but coming into it, everyone pretty much understands. You know what I'm saying? Yep. I understand, like, whatever you make, you make, mm-hmm. right? But what happens sometimes, and especially if a person isn't where they want to be, <coughs> they'll be like, all right, well, <coughs> this video really made a lot for you. Why don't you break me off? Two more other artists took it to you. Whoever. Mm. I've had this conversation with people. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I'll bring one up. Like, like Riff Raff. Right? Riff okay. Raff. Like, I, I, I gave Riff Raff one of his early interviews. Diplo called me up. You know how we get these phone calls. You know what I mean? Diplo. Vlad. You know what I mean? I was rocking with Diplo at the time and, you know, whatever else. And he's like, yo, I just, signed this art, I just signed this artist named Riff Raff. Can you get him on your show? Okay, checked him out. Okay, this dude's entertaining. You know what I mean? Like, called him up. You know. Diplo gives you his number, you call. Yeah, he he connected us. I hit him up. He's in New York. We do the interview. It's actually kind of dope. He has this crazy personality. We take him shopping. I take him to the Gucci store and buy him some shit on camera. And, you know, it's it does well. It gets a whole bunch of views. Um, <clears throat> I think we do another interview. And then for, like, I don't know, like seven, eight years we don't do anything. You know what I mean? We reached out. We just spoke a couple times. We're supposed to do some shit. He cancels last minute. Whatever. Life goes on. Whatever. We do this interview. And he hits me up after the fact. <coughs> it was like, yo, I've been hearing that you pay for, you know, you know, like, oh, people like Boosie, you know, I heard they be getting a bag or whatever else. Uh, you know, you need to pay me five grand for that interview. Like, I'm not, not going to give you five grand for that. It didn't even do well. You know what I mean? The energy was all... The interview's out. And the interview's, interview's already out. out. It's right. Out. Oh, it's already okay. out. It didn't do well. It did relatively low numbers because he was just like really kind of... wasn't the same riffraff. He was sort of like yeah. a little depressed and kind of more guarded and, you know, life yeah. had happened and whatever happened, whatever happened. It wasn't a very interesting interview and, and the numbers showed it. He's like, yo, I want like five grand. I'm like... My well, man, like if we had had a conversation about this ahead of time, there, there might have been a compensation, but we never had that conversation. All right, we'll take my shit down then. I'm not taking shit down. You're right. Fuck that. Right. Came in, you signed release forms, we spent our money, I did my fucking job, you, 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 you got your promotion, whatever else. And it's like that type of shit happens. People start counting your money and people start to feel like they're entitled to certain type of things and stuff like that. But, but... That's not the agreement. You know, if this interview got 50 million views, if this became the new Cat Williams interview, I know it won't. But I'm saying if it did, yeah, we, we, I'm not going to call you and ask you for a check. Right. I can guarantee you that. Right. 100%. No, but when was it at that moment where you realized that, holy shit, I have to like kind of like monetize this whole situation? Meaning what? Like, like meaning like... From the beginning, he was... Like, like from the beginning, you knew once you interview somebody... You need you, you 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 needed. All right, look. So okay. 
before Vlad TV was DVDs, right? Like, yeah. like I told you. Yeah, you said it earlier. We would interview, I would interview people, I would get unreleased music videos, I'd do other wild shit, you know, and, and try to compete with the smacks of the world and the Fendi's of the world and, and so forth. I'd be putting out the DVDs, but DVDs are going away. And, and I'd have to put out more DVDs every, the next month to try to make the money, that, the same money that I did the previous month. And it, it is, you know, I'd just gone through this shit with mixtapes, so it's really fucking frustrating. And, you know, I'm struggling financially. Mm. And then YouTube came around. And I'm like, yo, you mean to tell me that I could put out, I could shoot the same content that I'm doing on DVDs. I could put it out on YouTube. And when other sites, and if the content is intriguing enough, and you have the blogs, the now rights, and the on sites, right. and the complexes, and the right. world stars, and anything else like that, you mean to tell me that if they then embed this video and do an article about it, then I will get their views. Right. I will monetize through their fan base. Ding, like, like the light bulb went off. Right. I stopped DJing. I love DJing clubs. Like I did tours in Australia, in Europe, in the Middle East, in Japan. Like I, I was, I'm not going to say I was, you know, Kid Capri or anything else like that, but I was, you know, touring around and doing my thing. You know, I love, you. do you DJ at all? No. Nah. Not at all? You, of course, DJ. So you understand the thrill right, of, of DJing. And, and, and it's like I, a drug. It's a drug, right? I had to go cold turkey right. and put that drug aside. No more DJing. No more mixtapes. Uh, whatever hustling shit I was doing on the side had to be put aside. It was like, yo, this is start it. Start the blog? What's that? To start the blog? To start, to, the, to start the YouTube channel. The YouTube? The YouTube website. channel. The YouTube channel. Well, who the fuck tells you that? Who the, who the well, YouTube introduced its partner program in 2008. Before then, it was just like a, it was like TikTok. We just all, free right. for all. You put up shit and you get some views, whatever. You said then, a partner program? Partner program, yeah, which was monetized. monetized. Right. Yeah. So 2008, it turned into a real business. Okay. And you get paid off Meaning of the views. Everything. Meaning they run ads through the YouTube channel. Okay. And and <coughs> the more views, the more ads, the more revenue. You're paying with your eyeballs, like Leo likes to say. Um, your complex thing had nothing to do with your YouTube, or did it? Long story. I, I don't want to comment on that right, right. now. But, um, I, I saw the vision of it. I'm like, this is what I've been trying to do with the DVD shit, but... <laughs> this is what I've been waiting for technologically to be able to put it out and have it be the, and monetize it forever right? and be able to grow it. And, and you understand the snowball effect of, okay, and every day I'm going to drop a new clip and then all the like, old it's clip. It's like compound interest. It's compound interest. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Compound interest or a snowball, right. as Warren Buffett likes to say. Um, I, I just saw the vision of it all. I'm like, okay, and this is how I'm going to build a catalog and, and so forth. And then... And then over time, okay, and then I could have, as opposed to finding a new person to interview every week, I could have the regular guests to come in, like the, you know, basically like what like the news stations do, the pundits, to come in and talk about current events. Right. You know what I mean? Which but is those, which these, is what all the big these, dogs these do. These personalities got to be real personalities. Got to be real personalities. Yeah, for, uh, this is why feet. Boosie's a real personality. He's a real personality. Tony Yale is a real personality. Well, TK well, Kirkland well, well, is well, a well, real personality. Well, well, let me give all three of those people, they're real people. Yeah. Boosie, Tony Yayo, and TK Curtin. They're yes. real people. Yes. So, all right, continue. And then, you know, you build the business from there, man. You build it out. You build it out. You realize it can't just be you. You got to reinvest the money and so forth. But it was always like, you know, all the years have been building up to what YouTube, uh, the opportunity that I saw on YouTube up to that point. You know, kind of like how Ray Kroc like found McDonald's later in oh, life. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. knew, okay, oh, he had yeah. been trying to sell milkshake machines oh, yeah. and he knew the overall business. Oh, yeah. But when he saw McDonald's, he knew like, okay, like this is this is what I've been waiting for and this is what I'm going to utilize all vehicle, my skill sets. Right. You know what I mean? Because all the years of being a DJ and forming the relationship with people. And, you know, me and you knew, you know, kind of ran in. We didn't yeah. know each other, but we had run into yeah. each other during yeah. my DVD days. You, yeah. I think yeah. you were on yeah. some of my DVDs. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yes. Yes. You know yes. what I'm saying? So it's yes. like, it's easier to talk to you because I've already right. met you before. Right. And, right. and you know right. me probably from my mixtapes and everything I've been doing for all those years. <laughs> all right. For, so from 2002 to 2008, for six years, I, I was trying to find my way. Right. Full time. Right. 
and and that that's it was always it was like all right like I was thirty four at the time like yo like it's it's time to be serious like I'm I'm, I'm not gonna be the fifty year old DJ still trying to get gigs and depending on that shit because it's a hard fucking life and shout out to all the DJs that are going through this right now because it's hard I've been there you know what I mean like there's there's no loyalty in this shit. They'll, they'll get a new DJ for a third of the price right. to do the same shit you're doing and not give a fuck. You know, um, or they'll, they'll get a fucking model, an Instagram model to go DJ, pay her 10 <laughs> times the amount. Right. That's, is that you why know? you don't DJ no more? <clears throat> huh? Because the Instagram model. I mean, model I just, bitches. I never, I was, the transition to digital, I didn't, it didn't, I didn't adapt too well to it. I was heavy on the vinyl and that to me was like a culture in its own. Huh. I used to take all my records to the club. Ooh. Which was bad on my back and oh, my yeah. friends' backs. Uh, that's a chiropractic bill along right. with that, yeah. So, so yeah, I didn't. Ah, I didn't. Come back. Yeah. back. I'm back. I, I want to give you the opportunity because you said something that I feel like you might rephrase it. Okay. You said that you feel that your impact is bigger than the Source magazine and Double XL. And I didn't say that. You said something like that. No, 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 no. What, what, what I said, listen. Because I know what you mean. You mean in terms of I'm like the technology right, today. Right, now. right, right. My reach. That's what I'm saying. And my impact you might want to right rephrase. now in 2024, which is undeniable. Right. Now, did the source make a massive impact? And what they the, meant culturally. And what they meant culturally at the time. And, and what five mics meant. Right. And what unsigned hype meant. And them just really being the only, you know, the Bible of hip hop and everything else like that. Would I ever deny the, the importance of that? Of course not. That's stupid. Well, that's double XL will. and double XL, like they they took the torch. Yep. And they really kind of eclipsed the source. And, you know, as the source really kind of went down the tubes, double XL became the important voice, media voice in hip hop. Right. Like that's where Jay-Z, I think the first double XL cover was Jay-Z. I'm not sure. I, about, I bought it I at Barnes and Noble. I'd buy every issue. Right. Like I, I'm not just speaking out my ass. Like just saying like, oh, who are who are those guys? I never heard of. Them. No, 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 no. I, I know exactly who they are. But, but but what I'm saying is, is that in 2024, if you ask a hundred thousand people who are hip hop fans on any level, have you seen? Something recently from Vlad TV, The Source, or Double XL. No, hundred percent. I know what you mean, I, I, I would and you say know what you mean. Ninety percent of the people would say Vlad TV in two thousand. But someone else might not understand exactly what you mean and think of it as blasphemous the way you said it. So I just no, wanted to it's give. It's cool. Like like they, they all came before me. Ralph Ralph McDaniel's came before me. Ed and Dre came before me. Um, Five Five Freddy came before me. They're all legends. They're all people I brought to my platform. And because without a lot of the, what I'm they did, we wouldn't to, be here today. I'm supposed to interview Elliot Wilson. Right. I've interviewed Dave Mays and Benzino. Like, like, like. I mean, so I mean really? Yeah. Like, like I've I've shown homage to all these guys. You know, like I said, me and Elliot spoke recently. We just haven't gotten around to it yet. But right. all these guys I'm talking about, I have brought on my platform and gave them their flowers and anything else like that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, so I, I'm I'm not downplaying their contribution, but it's not their time right now. Right, right, right. It's not it's not their time right now. The, their time has passed. For sure. And and you know, can they bring something out of the ashes? Who knows? But it, it hasn't happened in the last 10, 15 years. Right. Is, is all I'm saying. Right. And and they should you know Ozone Magazine, another one. Yes, in the Shout south. Out Julia Beverly. In the south, they were they were innovators, and and they could be. Bigger than Vlad TV and Drink Champs right now, easy. Yeah. But but they didn't. She she fumbled the ball. Gag. Um your, your whole thoughts, I ain't gonna lie, your whole shit is in your face. Yeah. Everybody, you you are thinking about yeah. mad shit. Um to me, and and this is an example of the of that right here, as as we're speaking. I've I've always felt like we, we will win by fucking with each other, by all of us in this space, in this hip-hop <laughs> media space, sports media space, everything else like that. 
if we all fuck with each other, you mean that in a positive way? In not, a positive not in a negative way, negative fucking way. We fuck with each other, like you, yo. We share resources. Right. I can call you Network. up when I have a question. You know, I put you on when there's an opportunity. There's someone I want to talk to. Someone you want to talk to. I, I've been doing this longer than on the YouTube space, longer than anybody. So there are certain insights I have. Willie called me and asked me a few YouTube questions. I, I, I'm like, yo. Uh, us on the weekend, let's work on it and let me see what I can figure out based mm -hmm. on what I see. You know, I mean, we should all work together and fuck with each other. And I've seen time and time again how everyone wins. And when the new media guys show up, like the academics, like the Adam 22, like the Sean Cotton, you know, like, like all these guys I reach out to and I embrace, like the Math Hoffas, when he started doing media, and... and I go on their show. Pick up my brother Matt Hall. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, man. I go on their show when they ask me, and I ask them to come on my show, and they, you know, and then if there's deals in the works, we all fuck with each other, and it really is disappointing when I see people in my space just try to beef with me, right. and I think about all the opportunities that we're both losing yep. by being that way. Right. And, 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 you know, us not speaking with each other, I'm mm. like, is disappointing. Like I yeah. know, I know that that I could benefit from just having an open line of communication with Nori. Yeah. He could benefit from having an open yep. communication with me. Yep. You know what I mean? Like, like just just the other day, they hit me up. Stephen A. Smith's people hit me up. Yeah. Like, yo, we, we want to use um, part of your John Sally interview on, on our show. You mean first take? No, 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 not first take. Our YouTube channel, which which is not very big. You know, the clips are getting a few thousand views. I'm like, all right, well, have Steven call me. Mm -hmm. I would like to have him on my show, but, you know, I'm not saying I'm demanding it, but, you right. know, have him call me. We'll set up a line of communication, and you can use my footage. I'm cool with that. You know, right. that's, that's that'll be our barter, and, you know, let's talk, and there's certain things you're trying to push or I'm trying to push, whatever, and then if it makes sense for us to do shit with each other, cool. They chose not to do that, so I chose not to... Let him use my footage. And, and these are the disappointing moments for me right. in my space because it's like we're all, we're all doing this and we, and, and we miss opportunities. So when I see other media outlets that, that hate on me, whatever, it's just like it, it, it hurts me and I know it, and it's hurting them at the same time. And it's, it's just overall just like a disappointment, which is why I've always felt like let me just find the opportunity to reach back out to Nori and, and, and open up the line of communication. It took about a year for us to yeah. get to this point. You know but what you, I mean? You gave me one of my best compliments ever, man. I'll be honest. Me and you were really, 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 really close. And, and, and by the way, I feel, still feel like we were really close. I feel like we didn't miss nothing. Right. Like me, me personally, me yeah. personally. Because we weren't actually beefing with each other. We didn't we yeah. got nothing to beef about. Yeah, you said a few things. But you said whatever. to me, you said to me, you said to me one day, you said to me, yo, what y'all doing, you did more than a magazine did in five years, in one year. And, and that was one of the most best compliments I ever had. I don't want to say who, because I don't know if you have a relationship. I, I, but I was like, oh, shit. And then when, what happened was, this is what, this is what I think happened. And you, you correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> Me and you had CBS, and then Vlad said, yo, hook me up with, with CBS. Right. And I said, yo, EFN has a relationship because, I, and, and, and I said this, because I didn't want to have a relationship with anybody at CBS because I wanted yeah, he didn't even want to sign the contract. I had to sign the contract. They're looking at me. So crazy. I was like, but Vlad, but I had to sign it. In my opinion, <laughs> just hit me out. In my opinion, he's looking like you're my friend. Why are you sending me the EFN? Hit me out. Why are you sending me the EFN? And what I'm trying to tell you is, Vlad, I'm on a robbery mission. But I can't say, I can't say it because I'm like, yo, just let EFN, because EFN is dealing, right? With CBS. Yeah. We did that deal through Crazy Hood. Yeah, through Crazy Hood. I got nothing kind of to deal with it. But Vlad is my friend. So he's like... Well, but just to be clear, not because I wanted to, because you didn't want to get involved. Yes. And I had tax problems, sir. Okay. <laughs> I'm just saying. So people going to be like, damn. So I couldn't technically be on paper. I had to let... Right. Uh, you know, I don't know. I, don't wanna I mean, you didn't have to explain it. But we just, yeah, yeah. We did what we did. So when Vlad hit me and I was like, damn. 
can you go through EFN? And he's like, yo, you my friend. Uh, right? I could tell. I could tell. And he's like, yo, you my friend. Why would I go through EFN? And I was just like, I couldn't explain to you at the time, like, I'm going through tax problems. I'm going through all this. And EFN is running the ship. So yeah. you probably thought, oh, man, who? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I remember this whole incident. Yeah. And, and uh, listen, I, I have OCD. So I get overly focused on shit that I need to just let go sometimes. Right. So I, I get overly focused on one particular thing, thinking this might potentially be a business opportunity, and right. I sometimes overdo it right. with people and, and, right. and come on too heavy. And he followed up with me, but right. that kind of came and went. Really, it was the argument over right. me drinking on Drink Champs that escalated. Yeah, that so was the last part. That was the last yeah, part. That was the last part. Because me and you I, talk became yeah. cool after that. Yeah. We got over that. And then, and, and then I asked you, I was like, yo, Black, come on. He was like, but do we really got a drink? And I was like, Vlad, come on, man. You're, gonna, you're okay. Like, right. like, just so you know, Vlad, man, I'm going to be honest. And we'll, we'll, we'll address everything else. But we appreciate what you bring to the game, what you brung to the game, how you added on to the game. And I understand that there's a lot of people who Okay, you addressed it earlier because you're white. So people people think, oh, you didn't add on to the culture. No, this, that's that's a certain sector of people. Right. Drink Champs is not that. I know that. I vote with Young Drink Champs. Look, I don't know if you know, we didn't set this up, but this every nationality here. We are the United Nations. Mm. And let me tell you something, Vlad. As a person that I miss, as a person that I friend, my family, I missed you, bro. Yeah. And I want you to know that that the same way you gave me your platform, I want you to know that this is your platform, brother. You understand? Yeah. You understand? Hey, man, listen, I, I've always wanted to do this, you yeah, know, yeah. and and our, our back and forth was, was dumb. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. it was like, I... I'll do it, but I'm not going to drink. And it's like, well, you're let, <laughs> but that's the aesthetic. It's like, well, I ain't going to do it. It's like, well, Puffy got more money than you he drank. And I'm like, why are we talking about money? It's like, oh, you're you rich now. You don't feel like you got to give back. And the conversation's getting dumber and dumber. And it's like, all right, fuck this. You know, and, and it's just like, you, it's like two five-year-olds. Like, you know what I mean? It's, 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 yeah, it's immaturity. It's immaturity. And as I'm explaining this to someone else, and I'm saying this out loud, and I'm realizing how stupid I sound as I'm explaining this as a grown man to another grown man, I said, hey, Gloria, fucking call, man. <laughs> Solo. I gotta, Solo. I gotta reach Solo. out, Solo. reach out, Solo. apologize. Right. And you know, if he's ready mm. to talk, then he'll be you ready. You gotta sip, oh. you gotta sip. It doesn't count if you don't sip. It doesn't count, okay. Yes, Both. yes, come on. Let me apologize for my part because he's mm. just, man, he's asked me to be on the show. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and by the way, you. And you've been on my show. So yeah. the answer's always been yes. Yeah. But you know, it, 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 it's like, let me apologize on my behalf. And it took about a year to get to this point. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't think you're ready to get on the phone at that point. I'm like, all right, cool. You know, I congratulated you again recently. And then we got on FaceTime and boom, we posted the picture publicly. And yeah, I said, next time in Miami. God damn it. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here. But honestly, you know, our show is really about giving people their flowers. And I'm going to be honest. You're one of the, like, the very first people I wanted to give flowers because, really? because you know um, I always talk about this um, when I was in hip hop purgatory uh, purgatory a lot of people don't know what purgatory is purgatory is in between heaven and hell yeah. and in, in between that time I did Vlad TV repeatedly yeah facts and it did numbers and one of the biggest <laughs> let's, let's address this motherfucker one of the biggest, for me, not, I don't know, for your platform, is when I talked about walking through those doors. The Illuminati, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't open up my phone without somebody saying, no, he might have walked through the doors again. <laughs> do, do, you, do, do people ask you, do you walk through those doors? Uh, yeah, sometimes. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, like, people think I'm, you know, like, like, 
people think I'm paid to do push certain agendas and like you know, you know like I, I got a booster shot recently, like a vaccine booster shot, you know, and I, I felt it was important, you know, because I was seeing people around me get COVID and get really sick. So I'm like, all right, let me get a booster. And I, and I, I posted kind of my, every, you know, for three days how I was feeling because, you know, there's a little bit of soreness and stuff like that. And people think I'm being paid by Pfizer <laughs> to, to do this Dr. shit. And, Dr. Dr. Fauci? Yeah, or, Fauci. you know, or Fauci's Fauci. paying me or Moderna or whatever else, <laughs> man. Uh, or I, I'm, I'm being paid by Israel for my views or, or somehow there's someone in my pocket. Yeah, I'm an agent of chaos, <laughs> you know, right. that, that, I, you know, that type of thing. I'm a cop. I'm a fed. Um, yeah, man. It, it, it just it comes to the territory. Right. Everyone. It's always it's always interesting to me when I bring on a new guest, mm. one who ha an opinionated one, and seeing the hate that they get. Mm. Right. Because everyone has their own version of hate. Mm. You know, like when I brought up, you know, Jason from Hollywood Unlocked. He was on my show. I got to see all the gay hate. Right. I'm like, oh shit! Like, there's really some really homophobic people out here that are willing to right. call him the f word and really hate this dude. Like, you know, or Deal Hughley has his army of haters. It's like I thought everyone loves Deal Hughley. Like, you know, right. but everyone has their army of haters. Right. And it just comes when you have when you're affecting millions of people. It just comes. That's part of the package. Mm. It's the army of haters mm. that come with your fans, mm. right? Mm -hmm. You got your haters. Regardless of what people think, there's never been a single inner time in life that someone said I've recorded them without them knowing. I've had my phone calls recorded with people right. and put out on some fuck shit. Right. But I've never, you know what I mean? Like, if I record, like, let's say I interview, like, you know, when I interview R. Kelly in jail, like, I'll be like, I'll press the button, beep, it'll say this phone call will be recorded. I'll say, okay, so we're recording this phone call. They're like, all right, cool. So if anyone ever says anything, be like, all right, here you go. Like, we're, we're recording it. You're wearing a mic. This is all in the up and up. You know exactly what's going to happen once the cameras turn on. And, and that, that's important in this business, not to think that you're, you're sneaking people or, or whatever else. You have to have a certain level of, of integrity. You know, when, when Las Vegas PD, they called me like a dozen times asking me for the raw footage for that Keefe interview. I, okay. I always said no. Okay, you got to calm down. Okay. After the first interview or the second interview? They wanted all the footage. Okay. <laughs> well, he got arrested after the second interview. Not after. Second interview. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, like second. months after the second interview. So, how does your phone ring? Is, it does it say 73, what is it? What is it, Las Vegas, Erico? It's Las Vegas. 732? Uh, no, that's, that's Jersey. Um, Could they subpoena the footage from you? I don't think so. So, so they're, they're calling. It's the Las Vegas. They're leaving voicemails. Hey, this is they Detective so and so from Las Vegas PD. Please give me a call. Not saying what it's for. I'm like, I know what it's they, for. They kind of mad at you because you solved their case. Yeah, you know. Makes it like no. Who solved the case? Oh, so they're they're calling and then they start leaving the voicemail saying what they want, which is the raw footage. They start sending me emails. And I'm like, I, I, I'm not cooperating with this shit. Okay, let me ask you. Yeah. Are you obligated to give them the raw footage? No, that's what I just or asked you. Are you not? Subpoena. No. They, they could try to get a subpoena, but then... but then it, 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 it turns, Well, it's right. not even a jurisdiction thing. Um, it's, it's just you have a freedom of the press right. situation. Right, yeah. but there's been cases like the feds have tried to... The feds have tried to get my outlets. footage in the past and have failed. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And legally... They legally, cannot. legally, this is fire. Like, wasn't didn't well, they come I've, out? I've, I've talked about this. Uh, the, the the Jimmy Henchman situation. Um, Jimmy Henchman did an interview with me, and uh, we talked. And you know, a lot of times when I do interviews, I zone out. Oh. I'm thinking about the next question. I'm not carefully paying attention to every detail, detail. because yes, I'm thinking about what I'm going to ask next because it's all real time. What's happening? especially someone over a jail phone, which you have a limited situation with. So we, we talk about, you know, he, he briefly touches on his case. We talk about the Tupac allegations, whatever, whatever, whatever. And he explains to me how he's about to have an appeal, um, uh, appeal trial. 
mm. you know, because he's what, triple life or something mm. like that. Next day, um, you know, so we, we put it out. Next day he calls me, he's like, hey, my lawyer asked me to take it down. I'm like, all right, cool, I got you. Because his lawyer seen the actual interview? Okay. Yeah. He seen the interview, well, he listened to it because it's audio, right? Okay. He says to take it down. So I, I, I take it down. So it's over. Or so I think. Oh, shit. So then, like, six months later or something, I get a call from the Justice Department. It was like, yo, we need this footage. I'm like, nah, you can't have this footage. Well, you would already put it out, so we have the right to have it. Like, well, I'm not giving it to you. Well, we're going to put you on the stand. Well, then you'll have to speak to my lawyer then. Then Wait, this, this conversation is now over. If you pulled it off, they uh -huh. didn't have no evidence of that footage? Well... When it comes to evidence, you kind of have to get the originals. Right, you have to get it from the okay. source. Right? Wow. Because you okay. could tamper shit. You could play partial shit. You know what I mean? Like, you have oh. to have... Shit oh, could be edited, shit could be cut. You could play a small part of something <laughs> and make it look a certain type of way, but you have to submit the whole thing as evidence so when it gets played to the jury, they can hear the whole thing. You know? But didn't didn't the Twitter files expose that the feds had a deal with Facebook to to get access to stuff? I, I don't know about all that. Hmm. All I can speak I mean, about is what I know. That's what that's. What I, this is what I know. Out. This is what I know. This is my my story. So this is the only thing I, I I can really tell. So I, I lawyered up, and then they're like, "Well, we're gonna we're gonna subpoena him." I was like, "Well, no, because this is whatever." Well, he put it up, blah blah. We found out that there was a copy floating around on Instagram, like a small copy, like a small low quality copy floating around on Instagram mm. that they had. That they were they were trying to, but they were trying to get the original shit, and ultimately they weren't able to get it. They wouldn't get the um, who, who's the head of the of the government, um, the, the 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 head district attorney in the federal government right. has to sign off on shit like this. And uh, he wouldn't sign off on it. So I spent like- State 10 attorney, wasn't it? No, no, but it's a federal. Oh. The federal, the, 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 the chief attorney, whatever right. whatever his name was. M Mitchell, I think, was at the time. And, and this was a very important situation because this would have set a legal precedent of how things are moving forward. Because then it's like, if people push it up and take it down, they can legally- Oh, well, look at this Vlad TV case. Now we could, whatever you ever put up, even for one second, we could seize it. Right, right. Because if you keep it to yourself, you're allowed to protect your sources as a media outlet. This is, this is very important. This is some of the, what, what American society is built on in terms of freedom of the press. You know, you've been to places like Dubai. Yeah. You can't say fuck the government in Dubai. No, you cannot. They'll lock you the fuck up yeah. for five years. On your Instagram. On your Instagram. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously. Yeah, yeah, seriously. You will get five years. I, I'm putting this number out there, but I'm sure it's somewhere near there. It might be there. more. It might be 10 years. My, my friend, uh, he, he got sentenced to life. For what? Cocaine. Right, well. I mean, it I, I didn't want to go there. Yeah. Right, go ahead. Uh, but what's his name? Fredo, the, the UK rapper, just got five years for marijuana, even though he had a marijuana card in the UK or whatever else. Dubai said, we don't give a fuck about that marijuana card. There ain't yeah. no marijuana here. That's right. You can't get a car for that shit here. Five years. Yeah, let's take a shot. Bro. Yeah. We need a shot. You, you know what I'm saying? So, Stop. so. Damn, why my shot is way more bigger than you? <sighs> so that has to be your ice. It's the ice. It's the yeah, ice factor. You want it ice. Yeah, yeah, that's the ice. No, now it's the ice. You got to relax. Look, now. Now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. So, so ultimately, they weren't able. They didn't get the sign off on the footage. Jimmy goes to court and he loses his appeal. And he didn't know about what I did until years later. Now, now, do me and Jimmy have a relationship? No, not really. But, but, you know, do me and Keefy have a relationship? Somewhat, but not, not really. But, but I'm gonna always try to protect. Keefy if you D? come on my show, if you come on my show, I will try to legally protect you to the best of my ability. Right. You know what I'm saying? Keefy interviews out. I can't do nothing about that shit. Me taking it down is not gonna change nothing. You know what I mean? That's already out there, but. If there's any, if there's anything on my raw footage, which I don't think so, but let's just say there is, I'm not cooperating. To but that at shit any in. point when Kiwi was um, interviewing Kiwi, he was like, "Damn, I just." Like, well, oh, I just. It, it wasn't really that. It was like once 
you put that book out there, it just is what it is at this point. But the book, I, I wasn't, I wasn't trying story. to put Keefe in prison. I wasn't trying to help Las Vegas PD solve their case. I was trying to tell the story because I remember hearing about Orlando Anderson around 2007. You know, one of the one of the one of my friends who happened to be a crip in LA said, "Yeah, Orlando Anderson was the shooter, and we know him." And rah 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 rah. And, and then I've always, you know, Tupac is, if not my favorite rapper. No, it's my favorite rapper. Let me just not even let's bullshit. Let's throw that out there. Yeah, Tupac is my so favorite. So you wanted to solve the murder. Tupac let's is my it. favorite rapper, and I wanted to put the real story out there. Tupac yeah. did not is not living in Cuba. Uh, he, you know, he, he didn't. He's not, you know, this rapper that kind of looks like him. He's not in India somewhere. You know, he's not on Mars. Like, he passed away, and it was very sad. Tragic, yeah. And, and, and the most obvious thing is what actually happened. You go and beat up someone who killed two people recently— I just interviewed Robert Ladd, Compton PD gang unit, who was trying to, you know, had tried to indict Orlando Anderson on two different murders. Wow. Two people died and Orlando was right there in the mix on both of those murders. This guy was willing to pull out a gun and shoot you. Uh, he got that, that's up. what he did. I don't care if you, no matter how much... I, I talked to the mob James of the world, Jameses of the world, and all the dudes who, who love Tupac, who, who, who hate Orlando, and nobody said Orlando was a punk or he was a fake gangster or he wasn't about that shit. Orlando was a hitter. That's what the fuck he did. He shot people. And he killed people. And that's how he died in the middle of a fucking shootout and a triple and a murder. Station. At a gas station over a drug deal. You know, over someone owning him some money. Yeah. And 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 this is what happened. Tupac went and stomped out somebody who was extremely dangerous. So that's 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 what you believe Tupac's demise is. Yeah, hundred percent. One million percent because you solved Tupac murder. So you now you're gonna say the Tupac how it happened. You saying that one million percent he should not have touched Orlando. Absolutely not. A absolutely not. If if so, so what's the story that you you know leading up to him even <laughs> approaching Orlando that you know? It, it was it was a chain snatcher, right? The it, chain well, snatcher not, not, not at the mall. At the, at the mall. mall, yeah. With um, God. I'm drawing a blank right now. I'm smoking and drinking. Um, the fuck was his name? Uh. Can I look this up real quick just because because I feel Please. stupid? And my phone's dead. But someone look it up. The, 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 the Lake, Lakewood Mall. It was Lakewood Mall fight death row chain. Lakewood Mall death row chain. It was a guy who got jumped for his death row chain. He was the one that told Pot that Orlando was one of the dudes and, involved. And that's where Vegas is. Trayvon Lane, boom. Okay, so. So during the whole, you know, bad boy, death row beef, a bunch of Southside guys who were somewhat affiliated with, with, with bad boy saw Trayvon Lane at the mall wearing a death row chain and, and try to, they jumped him and tried to take his chain. Whether they took the chain or not, it, it doesn't matter. Okay, so we're saying these up. Crips. Crips. Southside Crips. Southside Crips. Bunch of Southside Crips jump on Trayvon Lane, who's a mob pyro, who's down with death row. It's part of the death this row. This is the one million percent. This is what happens. I know Trayvon. Okay. We'll, we'll eventually do an interview. Okay. Me and him have been talking for like five years. Mm -hmm. You know, eventually he'll, he'll do it. Continue. Probably. He got, you know, he claimed the chain was a snatch. Doesn't matter. He got jumped. Bunch of dudes try to jump on him and take his death row chain. So after the Mike Tyson fight, Trayvon, Tupac, Shug, Buntry, rest in peace, and some other bloods like Neckbone and so forth are all in the MGM lobby. And Trayvon looks over and says, that's one of the dudes that jumped me. And Tupac instantly makes a beeline by himself to him. That's why he, he see him walking by himself. Punch, yeah. With punch the Versace shirt on. Yeah. 
yeah. makes a beeline right to Orlando, punches What's him. What's a beeline? Face. I don't know what that means. I mean, he walks straight at him. Okay. By himself. Okay, continue. Even though he got a group of right. big monsters with him. Right. He beat. He ran straight at, at Trayvon. Hmm. And he went straight. He, sorry. Tupac went straight at Orlando Anderson. Orlando. Punched him. And then everyone else followed him, and then they started to kick him while he was down. And this footage is, is publicly released. So uh, we all, we, we, we've all seen this a million times. And then, and then started the retaliation process. Right. So you see this footage. You know this footage. We all know this footage. Yeah. What the fuck makes you say, QPD? I know we covered that earlier. What the fuck? Makes you say, I want to revisit this. He's the only living person in the car. After you read the book? Yeah. Well, after the audio, the Greg Kading audio footage comes out, he's talking about the it. police. The don't. other three people are dead. Okay. Orlando gets killed in the parking lot, triple, triple murder shootout. Big Dre, the, the big guy, the fat dude, yeah, fat. has health complications and just dies of being in, in bad health. There's one other guy. He gets killed in a random shootout in Chief Keef's weed shop in L.A. Did you say what? Chief Keef what? Chief Keef had a dispensary in L.A. Oh, Chicago? Chief Keef from Chicago, who's living in L.A. Chief Keef doesn't go to Chicago anymore, if you notice. He's, he left Chicago and never came back. He's been living in Calabasas and the L.A. area ever since. So he starts a dispensary. Now he's working there at the counter. It just happens to be a dispensary that... He, he owns. partially owns or owns completely or they license his likeness. Or who the fuck knows? But it's a dispensary associated with Chief Keef. A shootout happens and, and the third person dies. Nothing to do with Tupac or Orlando or anything of like that. It's just a random, a random wrong place, wrong time situation. Uh, so Keefe is the last person that's actually alive that could tell the story from a first person point of view. No, it's okay. Hello. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Doing an interview is fantastic. I'll see you later. Uh, yeah, go continue, sir. Yeah. So, so this is the only person. But so, you knew that this, you knew that Keepy D was, this is it. Yeah. This is it. All right. Th th there's really no disputing this part. This is the uncle. Orlando's gone. Orlando's gone. He has an audio of confessing other... it. He is the actual uncle of Orlando. He wrote, and then he wrote a book. It ties it all together. Like you, you, you'd be very hard pressed to try to say. But I got to be a devil advocate story. because they the book was out and they didn't give a fuck. What made you say? I want to interview you again. Oh, you mean the second interview? Second interview, exactly. Well, at that point, he had done a bunch of interviews. It, so it was like... It, it wasn't Vlad. Right. But at that point, it was just sort of a fill-in-the-blank situation. Everything had essentially been discussed. Like I said, I don't think anyone really cares about the second interview. It's, it's really about the first interview. You know, but it was like, all right, well, this dude's still doing interviews... You know, and, 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 you know, people have commented on, you know, Boosie's commented on him. Mike Tyson's commented on him. Like, you know what I mean? Like, well, let's see what he got to say. Like, he, he let his nuts hang. Like, all right, let's, let's have a conversation about it. Um, I didn't think that law enforcement cared. It'd been because between my first interview and the arrest, it was four years. Okay, so let me ask you. Where was you at when you they said they arrested KPT? And did, did you feel it's two part questions? One, where you was at, and then two, did you feel like, oh, I finally no, okay, nah, I I didn't even like. Now you gotta understand, like he got arrested. I'm like. I, I didn't really think much of it. I almost thought like, okay, well, this is just a horse and pony show. They're going to get him to sign a plea deal and 
give him a time served and they can say that, you know, say that he was part of it. Yeah, they solved the case. He's going to yeah. go on and he's an old man. He's 62 years old. They just want to close the case on the books and, and call it a day. And um, it, it didn't because because the, the point wasn't for, for him to be arrested. Like, I, like I, it wasn't my point to I didn't talk to Las Vegas PD or LAPD. Like, you know, I mean, I'm still not talking to them, so right. I wouldn't be talking to them then. And um, I didn't realize how big it is until like people like Pierce Morgan started reaching out to me and wanted me to do interviews on their plane. He's like the biggest interviewer of, course, we know of like Europe, you know, and like, and then like NBC News. And like, you know, it was just like all these people wanted to speak to me about that when I started understanding the gravity of of what was happening. But it, it, it's just one of those. I mean, I, I interviewed Tupac's rape accuser, Ayanna Jackson. And, you know, she, that was the first time she's ever been on video. So, you know, it's not like I'm just going to, I'm a Tupac super fan and I'm just going to advocate, 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 ad, you know, and bury everything else. Like, nah, like, he was like all of us, man. He, he had his shining moments and he had his embarrassments, you know, and he had his wrong decisions. He was, how much dumb shit have we done at 23? You know, yeah. that the world didn't get to see. Um, you know, how many bad decisions, sure. you know, when it, when it came to, to women, have we made that, that, you know, ultimately just wasn't a, ended up being a big deal that could have been, you know, like, like Daryl Strawberry, he told me, uh, yesterday, he said, you could pick your sins, but you can't pick your consequences. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. You could choose to do what you want to do. You you could do all the fucked up. You could do the drugs and you could do the crimes and you could do the lies and the stealing. You you choose what you do, but you don't know what's going to happen after you do them. That that's not up to you right. anymore. It's it's not your choice. That will be up to other people to mm. to, to to decide how they're going to deal with, with 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 what you've done. Right. You know what I'm saying? And and that's the that's the reality of it, man. That's the reality. And see, um, see, see piss. Come on right back. So what do you think the the next iteration or is there for you moving like ten years ahead of now? Um like do you see yourself changing formats, changing style? It's already changing. Like the biggest the biggest clip of last year was the Boosie House tour. All right. Uh, did you see that at all? No, no, I didn't. It, it was a tour of his 88-acre estate. Like bringing back like MTV Crip style? Like that, yeah. Okay. I did, we did, that was the, that was the, it was three and a half million views. So. Ju just that one 20-minute piece. You know what I'm saying? Not, not, you, know, you could add up the pieces together, it's even more than that. But right. I'm saying just that one single piece as the si biggest single piece of the year, it, it was that. But with that came uh, LeVar Ball house tour. It came DJ Envy's car collection. Um, you know, uh, we just did Dion Dawkins' house and, and his yacht. You know what I'm saying? So you discovered a whole new lane. For we her. did. I just did one of my favorite barbecue spots. Right. You know, Blood Souls Barbecue. You know, where, where I got to go and actually get on camera. And, and, and you know, I'm, I'm like a lifetime foodie. So I actually get to like... And it seems like you can't do no wrong in this lane that you're describing right now. Well, I mean, you know... You, you could always have shit that doesn't react, you know? I, right, mean, I mean, in terms of people criticizing the content. Yeah, like, but it's not about the criticism, man. Right. It, it, it's, not, it's not about, like, I, I don't do it for that. Like, I, I know, for example, you know, I, I do a lot of, you know, I've always been a big proponent of, of stock investing, right? So when I put out clips, you know, I have like a Vlad stock series, like a nine, nine or 10 part series where I break down uh, stock investing and I, I talk about different, um, you know, just the different things that I've used in terms of what I've found to be successful and so forth. And, and all through the comments, yo, man, we love you. Yo, more content like this. You're the best. You know, oh, yo, this is Transformer. Like, like, like I, I can create videos that all they have is positive comments. Right. I, it's, so, it's so easy to do. But that's not what the business is about. It's not about trying to give myself a pat on the shoulder. Like, fuck that. Like, I, I know what it is. 
I, you know, if a video has 90% negative comments, that's fine. As long as what we're doing is, is important. You know what I mean? Is in terms of what the, the, the strength of the content, you know, I mean, you think, you think people want to hear, you think all the Tupac fans and there's a lot of them. You think they want to hear about Ayanna Jackson talking about how, <laughs> you know, she came to see Tupac and ended up having sex with two other dudes and she was never with that. And, you know what I mean? And, and things went very left. And Tupac was like, get this bitch out my face. And you know what I'm saying? Like, like Tupac fans don't want to hear this shit. I know it's going to be like a bunch of negative shit, but this is an important story. And, and, and that, that that's why, like, we are we are changing. You know, I, I was saying about how the biggest clip was, was the, the, the Boosie House tour. Uh -huh. You know, that was the biggest clip of last year. You know, and we're doing house shit. We're doing car shit. We're doing restaurant shit. Mm. You know, I was actually supposed to do <laughs> Trick Daddy's restaurant, but then, then then he didn't he didn't show up at the restaurant, so we we just didn't want to do the restaurant without him. So yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. What we're doing we're Sundays. Doing, yeah, Sundays exactly. Mm. We, we ate there with the fried ribs. Ugh. You know, but yeah, like, I, love it. I, I would love to do. I would love to be like <clears> the, <throat> the Robert Leach, you know, of uh, you know of two. Get the good automat on. <laughs> Oh, yeah, God, for a you're, you're, you're a watch guy, see? I, you know, you got the Richard Mill. I mean, you know, I, I, I got a couple. You got a few uh, Audemars. I got, I got, you know, I got, you, know I got you got the couple, AP. I got, I got, you know, the Patek, you got the Patek on I, my back. I got, I got, I got, I got I, 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 You know, we got a nice, you know, watch mm, collection. And we yeah. take the picture. You build, you build them up. You yes. build them up. I had to wear some nice. Yes, yes, you know, yes. For drink champs. I show yeah. out. Well, 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 look, yeah. motherfucker. I had, I had to look Black motherfucking TV. Make some fucking noise. Hold on, hold on. No more shot, Jamie.